Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could I have the members of the General Government Licensing Committee to, to uh, committee room number one, please, so we can finish our meeting? Would members of the General Government and Licensing Committee please report to Committee Room 1 for quorum? Please report to Committee Room 1 for quorum. Thank you.
Okay, I'm uh, going to call the meeting back to order. Uh, Councillor Holliday, before we resume item number two, I, did you have a quick release? I or did. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I will struggle for a moment to find the item number unless somebody knows it off the top of their heart. Um, Thank you, GL 5.14, the interim status on uh, report on fire and life safety. I'll thank staff for answering my questions on the break. And if the chair would permit me to make a very, very brief statement, uh, as a former, uh, well, as a current and former member of the previous uh, audit committee, um, this is a really important uh, report to me. And uh, I think all members of council should take notice of this and members of council should offer their full support to staff that are working through this process. Um, I believe it's incredibly important for all uh, areas, uh, divisions and offices within the city to be forthcoming with the information needed to prepare the reports that are coming to council uh, at the end of the year uh, in Q3 2019. Um, because of the work of the audit committee, we'll be looking forward to that report. I'd also take a moment to put in a plug to all members of council that sit on various uh, agency boards uh, board of Directors and uh, similar organizations to make sure that they take the message from this audit over to those organizations so that they can have a look internally to see if some of the issues that came up on fire and life safety are also affecting those organizations and taking the steps to deal with it um, uh, without delay. Thank you and I'm happy to, uh, to um, um, receive the report as recommended. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Holliday. Uh, any questions of the mover? Uh, seeing none, all in favor? Carried. And then I have uh, two releases uh, for myself as well. Item number 22, the Civic Innovation Office update. Uh, I'm moving a motion that City Council receive this report for information. All in favor? Carried. And the same with item number 23 on the OMERS. I think it's very important that Council understand uh, we're the largest shareholder of OMERS and participant and the makeup of the agencies and boards that uh, OMERS uh, has an overview of. Uh, so I'm also moving the City Council receive this report for information. All in favor? Carry. Thank you. Okay, we are back to item number two. Uh, we're on uh, deputant number four, Ms. Jacqueline Ebo from Defend Dignity. Good afternoon. You have uh, three minutes whenever you're ready. Thank you for this opportunity today. I don't want to start this by generalizing and saying that everyone in body rub parlors are victims of human trafficking, but I will say lifting the cap blows open the door to furthering an issue already categorized in Toronto as an epidemic. Lifting the cap of body rub parlors only increased trafficking and fully legitimizes the selling of sex. In other countries where the selling of sex has been legit legitimized, the numbers of human tra trafficking victims have risen. My recommendation is to keep the cap on body rub parlors at 25. We recommend that fines for body rub parlors and holistic centers attendance be removed and that the city focus enforcement of efforts on the owners and managers of these establishments, as often as these individuals are involved in human trafficking. Body rub parlors and holistic center owners and operators must be trained on the signs of human trafficking prior to licensing, and owners and operators must be held accountable for their actions. Our next recommendation is that the City of Toronto provide employment training or deferral alternatives for women applying for body rub licenses at the time of application. The diversion of licensing fees could provide employment supports, education grants, and exit services. The city should also provide a human rights-based approach that includes access to medical care regardless of status as a Canadian citizen. When the women come to the city for licensing, they must meet privately with the city so that there is confidentiality and they can be offered employment training and exit programs. The city must also provide translators for attendants when applying for these licenses. Another recommendation we have is that we re recommend the municipal licensing and standards remove the accreditation for the 10 professional holistic associations that were identified in the Auditor, Auditor General's report of October 2017 as operating on paper only. These associations should not be allowed to self-regulate. The City of Toronto should provide the oversight needed. 
We also recommend that the city employ employees and bylaw officers be trained on the signs of human trafficking. Available social serv services in Toronto and basic human rights as they encounter those seeking applications for licensing. They should also be trauma informed and there should be full package of all this information dispensed to all applicants. These info packages should be translated into Mandarin, Cantonese and French. If human trafficking is suspected, city employees must also know the action to take steps forward. Body rub parlors and holistic center owners and operators must be trained on the signs of human trafficking prior to, tr to licensing. We recommend that human trafficking hotline number be added to the license for each body rubber so that she can access that number as needed for reporting or asking questions at any time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions of the deputy? Uh, seeing none, thank you very much for coming in this afternoon. Uh, next, I have Eric Tzu. Good afternoon, Mr. Tzu. You have uh, three minutes whenever you're ready. Hello. Um, I'm a uh, body rub parlor owner. Um, I just wanted to touch on some of the uh, recommendations in the report. Um, particularly the proposed amendments governing uh, body rub parlors. Um, specifically, we are, I am in favor of most of the, uh, the recommendations recommended, particularly the change in the hours, as well as the security cameras, which I think are very vital to the security of the establishment. Um, I'm also um, in favor of the elimination of the health check requirement for attendance. Um, I think that is, that requirement was impractical, um, a little discriminatory, and I think an invasion of privacy, um, as well as the elimination of the requirement that a attendant be working at specifically one location. Um, they should be free to work at any establishment that they want and not uh, pigeonhole to one spot. There are two um, bylaw um, provisions that I do think need to be addressed um, that wasn't specifically recommended in the report. Uh, particularly one on advertising. Um, currently, um, we are prohibited from any form of advertising whatsoever, um, except for like a small signage on top of our establishment. Um, all we want is just to have a, a, a website and be able to uh, advertise on social media. Um, we're not looking for any outrageous signage, really just a website. Um, this provision was written before the internet, and you know, as we all know, the internet is, or the, uh, having a website is vital to any business. And two, uh, removing the requirements on dress. Um, if we are going to recognize that body wear parlors are adult entertainment as specified in the City of Toronto Act, then there really shouldn't be a dress requirement as it doesn't, is not congruent with that designation. Um, in, terms of, with, in terms of the holistic uh, licensing, I understand it's a comp complicated issue. Um, I'm not opposed to the lifting of the cap on body rep licenses um, if the city were to move forward with the elimination of the holistic um, licenses. Uh, even though that would devalue the value of our license, I think it's a fair approach. Um, consider, and you have to obviously balance all uh, considerations. Uh, philosophically, I do feel that if a holistic is offering a body rep service, then they should be a body rep, they should have a body rep license. Um, and that's all, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, questions of the deputy? Councilor Karagiannis. You are an operator of a um, holistic center? No, I'm an owner of a body rub parlor. Where are you located? Um, the exact address? I don't think he has to provide that. Oh, well, area. It's right around York, Uni right around York University. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you, proposing that we lift the cap of um, holistic uh, um, holistic uh, butter up uh, holistic partners there's 400 right now should we lift that cap should we lift the cap of uh, uh, the butter up partners from 25 um, my I, like I said I understand it's a complicated issue um, so if the city were to go forward with the elimination of the holistic licenses then I wouldn't be opposed to the lifting of, um, of the, the cap on body rep parlors. Uh, with one condition, as long as the current zoning restrictions are still kept in place. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there questions of the deputant? 
Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, the next speaker is Mr. John Castles, serving in Missions Canada Field. Good afternoon, sir. You have three minutes whenever you're ready. Great. Uh, it's great to be here and uh, my pleasure to be able to address you. I um, began uh, working with marginalized troubled youth in uh, 1984. I've been a human trafficking specialist for the last 12 years. And um, I want, want to be clear that you understand what goes on in the body rub parlors, what they are designed uh, to provide in terms of services. Stimulating by any means a person's body for the purposes of appealing to erotic or sexual appetites or inclinations. That's how Toronto defines the purpose of those 25 body rub parlors. They were designed to be houses of prostitution. Um, the definition is a reasonable definition of sexual services. It's the reason why men visit these establishments. But the purchase of sexual services in Canada became a criminal offence in 2014. So the, the licence renewals for the body rub parlours, you have to understand the City of Toronto is party to criminal activity. I, uh, in my role as a, as a human trafficking specialist, I do uh, interview um, people who have come out of exploitation in, in all aspects of, of the sex industry, including the massage industry. I can tell you for sure um, that not all of it that happens within the massage industry um, in, in holistic uh, centers and body rubs are, is necessarily human trafficking, but what we've seen is a trend in the last 25 years or so where we've seen a lot more drug use, we've seen a lot more pimp activity, human trafficking, we've seen mental health on the rise, we've seen uh, death by suicides and overdoses. Um, so things are trending in a very negative direction. These are the survivors. They, they know the industry and how it destroys women. They have seen it, they have experienced it, and they have lost friends. Municipal licensing and standards proposes the removal of licensing restrictions to uh, facilitate greater numbers of body rub parlors uh, in Toronto. It claims as well to uh, want to ensure the wellness of persons. I wonder which persons they are referring to because it can't possibly be the women. They are correct, however, that a large number of Toronto's licensed holistic centres also operate as brothels. Not all of them do. Some of them provide very legitimate and worthwhile services, but we have a huge problem. Yesterday I spoke with a parent whose school-aged daughter was being trafficked by a pimp and one particular evening it was discovered she was in a certain holistic centre in Etobicoke on the Queensway. The 17-year-old was advertised on a prostitution site on the internet. My friend went into the nearest Toronto police station with her daughter's passport and right, evidence sir. that she right, was I need being you to wrap up. exploited at that location. The answer was we don't have the resources. So these, we have a lot of problems. Um, the city licensing of these establishments has contributed to those problems. We don't have the resources to protect the vulnerable people. Vulnerable people. Sorry, sir. I need you to wrap up. Thank you. I would Thank just you. like to, in closing, say that we need to stop issuing body rub licenses and we need to effectively deal with shut down the offenders in the holistic centres who are not abiding by the appropriate laws. Let's put the women first. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the deputy? Councillor Karagiannis. Um, when you shut them down, you're an expert in trafficking. What will, what will happen? Will they go underground? Um, in fact, um, what you're doing as a city when you license places that are designed to provide prostitution services, you are normalizing it, um, when you do that, when it's tolerated in society, you see a greater instance of human trafficking. Studies from around the globe have proven this. This was the basis for 
the outlawing of sex purchase in Canada and uh, the, the difficulty that we see where human trafficking continues to be on the rise is squarely on the inability of our communities to discourage this kind of activity. Um, it doesn't significantly push it underground. The people who go there to uh, access the services can easily find it. Our bylaw officers and our police officers then as well can easily find it. Thank you. Are there questions of the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Lex Lex Sammy Windager. Good afternoon. My apologies if I mispronounced your name. Uh, Laksmi Vinharka, that's my name. Thank you. And you have three minutes to start whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, Councillor. My name is Laksmi Vinharka. I'm a holistic practitioner, a Thai massage instructor, and the owner of Holistic Center, a mother of two children. So uh, today, I cannot say much about um, what a parlor, because I have nothing to do, uh, associate with that. But I will speak on behalf of practice, uh, holistic practitioner who have been following rule and regulations. And also, for us, we specialize in traditional Thai massage, which has a long history and is dated back to 1,000 years ago. So it's unacceptable to you know, put everybody in, in the body of parlor as we we do not associate with sexual activity. And also, um, the proper change will affect our image and our reputation. How can I go home after work and look at my children in the eyes and say that mommy has a buried up license? When we clearly, we do not do that. And also, many of our customer have insurance that cover for holistic practice. Who would cover for body up parlor? So I agree that uh, you know the, the safety and uh, to modern, uh, modernize things for body up for their safety, but for holistic practitioner who have been following and work hard. I believe that our safety uh, is not at risk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the deputy? Councillor Holliday. Thank you for speaking to us. Do you have a, an overarching association that yes. you report to? And how does it work? Are you a member? And do you yes. believe that they police others that provide the same services as you to make sure that they're following the rules as, uh, as you so, uh, for traditional Thai massage, we have an um, association that's called Traditional Thai Massage Association of Ontario. Okay. So that is also get the support from Thai, uh, Thai government. Okay. And so that we are also responsible for our member who are under our association. And do they watch what you're doing to make sure that you are honoring the requirements of the association and practicing as they would expect you to? Or, and do they take action if somebody is misbehaving? Absolutely. Every year they will review, we have to renew uh, the, uh, the member uh, license. So if there's somebody that we believe that they, are, they discontinue uh, to be a member and that they cannot um, get a, a license from the city of Toronto because that is one of requirement that you have to be a member of association before you're able to get a license from the city of Toronto. So they'll cancel them from the, they'll cut yes, them from definitely. the association. Right. Okay. And how much do you pay to be a member of the association? For the first year, I believe that we paid 350. Okay. Yes. And what's the process? Do you just mail them a check or do they come and visit you? Do you sign an agreement, so how do you we, become a member? For, for myself, I have pretty uh, <coughs> recent achieved with um, the president of uh, Thai Massage Association of Ontario. So I usually go to the meeting uh, face to face. And okay. others, most people, I believe that they also do the same. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Other questions of the deputy? Councillor Karajanis. 
How many associations are there? How many associations for holistic center? Mm -hmm. I believe it's about- 10, 11, 12, how many are there? I'm sorry? 10, 11, 12? Around 29. 29. Association. And are you a member of all 29? No, no. I'm only the member of Thai Massage, a traditional Thai Massage Association of Ontario. How many members do they have? So that would be the, um, uh, I believe the people who have, like, who qualify. Sorry, and how many members do your association has through the chair? How many, how many members that they have right now? Your association, yes. So I'm not the owner of the associations. But you must know how many members there are in the association? Yes, no? Roughly, I believe, yeah. How many? 266. So 29, your association represents 266. There's 400 uh, holistic centers. So I'm, all I'm asking is this. We should not be, uh, you know, uh, paying Sorry, in the, the same brush. I'm the one brush. asking the question through the chair. Yes. My question to you is if your association has 266, the other 28 then represent the other 140, would that be correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions of the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much for being here this afternoon. Thank you so much. Our uh, uh, next uh, deputant is Ms. Julia Drydick from the Canadian Centre to End Human Trafficking. Good afternoon. You have three minutes whenever you're ready. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank members of the committee for providing with me, me the opportunity to speak today. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Julia Drydick and I'm the Manager of Research and Public Policy at the Canadian Centre to End Human Trafficking. Um, we have some major concerns about the recommendations that have been presented to committee today, um, and I'd like to provide some detailed examples of how some of the potential risks that they pose to people that are vulnerable to human trafficking. Um, I also want to reinforce is that this is a matter of protecting the human and labor rights of body rub attendants and of people living in our city. Um, some of the recommendations that are meant to increase safety for one group end up having dire consequences for others. And simply making body rub licenses more accessible to new entrants without ensuring that they aren't being funneled into situations of abuse and exploitation can end up fueling the issue of human trafficking in our city. For example, survivors that attended consultations were very clear that requiring alert system and body rub service rooms are unlikely to be helpful, especially if the manager receiving the alert is the one exploiting or trafficking them. Similarly, permitting cameras in designated areas of body rub parlors could be used to the advantage of traffickers, and traffickers often use video footage of their victims to coerce them into forced sex or labor. Not only could traffickers threaten to release videos to friends and family as collateral, but experience in other jurisdictions has shown that traffickers and body rub owners will sometimes even use cameras to live stream sexual acts without the victim's consent. The report recommends that body rub parlors be required to post information on services and supports for individuals seeking help. However, survivors clearly indicated that this is unlikely to work and that information will only more likely be posted when there's a suspicion of an, an, uh, of an investigation by bar officers. There are also a couple recommendations that have disproportionate benefits to owners and managers of body rub parlors. Increasing the hours of operation for body rub parlors explicitly benefits those owners who profit the most from the operations. And similarly, it's unclear who would really benefit from the proposed amendments to require for written contract of services. Considering that many of the body rub parlors um, have a history for hiring minors, relaxing reporting requirement on contracts of services between owners and body rubbers also seems counterintuitive to reducing exploitation and human trafficking. As a whole, we think that this entire report should be rejected, um, but we did want to flag a couple of items that we think are heading in the right direction. Removing restrictions that tie attendance to one employer could be helpful for trafficked victims that are looking to leave an exploitative, abusive, or trafficking situation. Ensuring that managers and owners are licensed and screened for prior violations, especially human trafficking related offenses, is also a step in the right direction. Providing information on human rights, labor and employment rights, human trafficking, and available social supports at the time of license applications is also a good step forward. And we are strongly in support of providing this information in the first language of the body rubber or the holistic practitioner. In closing, I want to reinforce that good public policy is based on having sufficient data, evidence, and information to actually understand the problem in front of you that needs to be solved. 
It then requires finding effective interventions that fix that problem with make, without making sure that, that in the process you're creating a whole bunch of negative unintended consequences for other stakeholders. It's our opinion that this report does none of those things. It is simply not a good piece of public policy and it has not been adequately thought through. I urge the committee to defer the approval of the report and its recommendations and instead direct MLS to establish a task force that's comprised of experts in the field, including survivors of human trafficking, sex workers, holistic workers, and body rub workers, as well as service providers and advocates to undertake a thoughtful, evidence-informed strategy to reform the body rub uh, parlor regulation in a way that places the rights, the well-being, and the safety of attendance um, at the very core of its work. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to accept questions. That's my line. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions of the deputant? No. No, I do. Yeah. I just wanted, so mm -hmm. um, in the report it outlines everybody that was consulted or that went to the, to the meetings. Mm -hmm. So you think that's not extensive enough, like you just mentioned about a task force. So part of the way that the consultations took place were incredibly problematic because they had open meetings which automatically present barriers to survivors of human trafficking because they're worried that their traffickers are going to be there. There's significant immediate dangers for them showing up and being able to speak. But also, I do have to say that our organization, despite having been mandated to engage with the city in establishing this, had many roadblocks in terms of actually setting up a meeting with municipal licensing and standards um, that had many delays. And in all honesty, we felt as though we had to push the doors open. Um, at the same time, the consultation report and some of the findings from the consultations weren't inclusive of everything we heard in that meeting. Okay, and sorry, what kind of roadblocks did you have with MLS? It was specifically just really challenging to establish a meeting. We could not get a meeting with them um, up until the report had basically already been drafted. And you'll find that that's actually reflected in the structure of the report, because findings from survivors of human trafficking, but also uh, folks that identify as, as sex workers are really at the end. They're, they're, an, amend, they're, they're an attachment to the main report. Um, we do feel that the majority of the findings are more responsive to the needs and the interests of body rub parlor owners and managers. Okay. And then for people that identify as victims of human trafficking, mm -hmm. so you would recommend that they, they would have like individual meetings in private with the MLS staff? Yep. And uh, with contacts and relationships of people of trust, so making sure that we're not putting them in situations where it's potentially re-traumatizing right. um, or creating additional safety issues. So having somebody with them in the meeting. Yeah. Okay. If they so choose. Yep. Understand. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, you. coming in today. Uh, next on our list of deputants is Ms. Barbara Ghost from the Canadian Centre to End Human Trafficking. Good afternoon. You have uh, three minutes whenever you're ready. Great. Thank you very much. My name is Barbara Goss and I'm the CEO of the Canadian Centre to End Human Trafficking, a national charity dedicated to ending all types of human trafficking in Canada. Our organization has been working on this matter and presenting to municipal licensing and standards, city council, city staff on this issue since 2013. And we've been eagerly waiting this report. As you know, council unanimously directed municipal licensing and standards to undertake a review of licensing bylaws concerning trades and businesses that are known to be destinations for human trafficking with the objective of establishing measures and policies aimed at addressing the consequences of human trafficking from the perspectives of health and safety and crime prevention. That was a 2013 council recommendation that has not been fulfilled, at least not by this report. This report did not even take into consideration any consultations with Toronto police. There has been no human trafficking lens put on this report. And Toronto police have identified that since 2013, when that comprehensive review was done by City Council and those unanimous recommendations were made, that they have had almost 1,100 victims of human trafficking. Many of those victims they identify as being trafficked at one time or another through the body rub parlor system here in the city of Toronto or through holistic spas. Now we're not saying that all of those people working within these establishments are victims of human trafficking. But we also know that many body rub parlors and holistic centers are rife with various degrees of exploitation. And we take firm issue with the regulation that is proposed by this report. Under the current approach being put forth by your staff, 
There would be an immediate surge in the number of body rub parlors as holistic centres are moved under the body rub licensing regime. While the intent is to increase regulation and oversight, we don't know how municipal licensing and standards actually intend to do this. The report does not identify these measures in any way. What we do know is that they cannot regulate the operation of the existing licensed and unlicensed establishments today. City bylaw enforcement officers are struggling to keep up with inspections and lack of adequate training to detect human trafficking and provide trauma-informed supports to potential victims. It's our view that this report and its recommendations fundamentally fail to achieve the outcomes that it has been directed to take. Staff have not used the anti-human trafficking lens, nor does it provide a framework that reliably ensures the health, safety and well-being of persons working within these establishments, or even a focus on crime prevention measures. There needs to be an exhaustive audit that should review every single body rub parlor and holistic spa currently in operation. This audit should include close coordination with statistics, facts and experience of Toronto Police Services, anti-human trafficking advocates and most importantly those who have been trafficked within such establishments. A complete audit will demonstrate that a significant investment of resources is actually needed for effective oversight to deter exploitation and trafficking. In the case of continuing to license these operations, the city cannot continue to operate blithely, accepting that bylaw staff's assertion that their oversight controls this exploitation. Sorry, I need that to on its up, face please. is absurd. I will I'll follow up. I would like to urge this committee and indeed the full council ultimately to reject the approach being taken by this report and instead direct this office to complete an audit and perhaps include that within a task force agenda that could be struck on this item. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions of the deputy? Then? Seeing none, thank you very much for coming in this afternoon. Appreciate your perspective. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I have uh, Ms. Sandra Kahan Chu from the Canadian HIV AIDS Legal Network. Hi, I'm going to have my colleague Reid Keiko here with me. Good, morning. Good afternoon. Um, as I mentioned, as you mentioned, I'm Sandra Kahan Chu. I'm a human rights lawyer with the Canadian HIV AIDS Legal Network. We're a human rights organization based in Canada, and we work directly with newcomer communities and sex working communities to promote, promote their human rights. And I want to focus my submission on the importance of applying a public health and human rights lens to this review of body rub and holistic health um, bylaws. A public health lens upholds the health, safety and well-being of workers based on the best scientific evidence and a respect for human rights. In order to do this, the city must prioritize the perspectives of those most directly affected by any proposed bylaw amendment. In this case, it is the perspective of the holistic health care providers and the body rub providers. We're hearing a lot of conflation of trafficking with the people who work in these settings, and that is simply not the case. Our organization intervened before the Supreme Court of Canada in Bedford and Canada, a case involving the constitutionality of the sex work criminal laws. And the judge in that case found a lot of this research very, very much methodologically flawed, where sex work was conflated with human trafficking. As you've already heard, over 90% of workers in holistic centers are immigrant Asian women who have limited alternatives to employment opportunities to support themselves and their families. Over the course of the previous month's consultations, which I know the city staff have had with these workers, these, they have expressed to city staff their overriding concern that removing the holistic health licensing regime will mean that they can no longer work or support themselves and their families. Far from being protective, shutting down these businesses and forcing workers out of their jobs will harm workers and increase their vulnerability to exploitation and abuse. We share the same concerns as many of the other people here about workplace safety and health. And we, we think shutting down these businesses and forcing them out of these settings is actually far more dangerous than applying a human rights and public health lens. I also wanted to touch very quickly on the body rub uh, parlor licensing regime and the importance of prioritizing evidence and um, scientific evidence and human rights. And just to um, point out one section that I think has come up a few times today is a health exam that is mandatory currently uh, under the sections 545-333. Um, our organization works in public health and human rights and we know that this section is in completely impractical uh, based on um, moralizing about the work that happens in body rub parlors and impracticable because as you might know, Toronto Public Health already lists over 60 communicable diseases as reportable. How, are, how is any physician about, supposed to provide um, a certificate um, uh, suggesting that this person does not have any of these infections? Um, it's far too broad, and evidence also suggests that mandatory testing drives people away from healthcare. 
is far more effective to provide people with voluntary uh, access to sexual and reproductive health services than requiring them to be tested and um, certifying them as free of disease. Finally, I wanted to um, strongly urge the committee to adopt the recommendations already made by my colleagues from the Workers' Action Center earlier today and to incorporate language in the recommendations of the MLS report that explicitly acknowledge the need to consult with the holistic health and body raw practitioners in the ongoing process of this review and ensure a labor and employment rights lens is applied to workers in these industries. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, questions of the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much to both of you for coming in this afternoon. Uh, next on the list is Tashia Skobaleva from Aurora Freedom. And my Hi. apologies if I mispronounced your name. Yeah, it's Taya Skobaleva. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. You have three minutes whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Taya Skobaleva, and I'm really grateful to be here today. Um, I'm a human trafficking survivor, a speaker, and a facilitator for the Human Trafficking Peer Prevention Project for Aura Freedom International. Um, I'm here today to speak from an anti-human trafficking perspective, and as someone with lived experience, I've seen firsthand what goes on behind the scenes in body rub parlors. And the fact is that there are people, including minors, like I was, uh, that are being exploited in some of the parlors within Toronto. And body rub parlors have been known to be a greeting ground, gre breeding ground for human trafficking. The first thing I wanted to speak about was the possibility of implementing ongoing criminal background checks of body rub parlor and holistic center owners. One criminal background check before licensing is not enough. As a safety measure for employees, I believe continuous background checks should be issued yearly to ensure uh, to minimize the risk of criminal activity going on um, behind closed doors. And just as an example, this is from my own lived experience. My trafficker is convicted and he is in prison right now, um, but his partner is running the, the parlor that I was trafficked out of. And when he gets released, he's gonna go right back to running it and that should not be allowed. Um, human trafficking training for any person applying for a license to operate a body rub parlor should be made mandatory, as well as providing resources for employees on workers' rights and where to go if they need assistance. As someone who was underage, working in a parlor, um, learning about trafficking may have helped me realize that what was going on was illegal and wrong because I wasn't aware, and I would have realized that I was being exploited. In regards to restrictions on places of employment, allowing employees to work at numerous locations of their choice would allow them control over their work environment and limit the chance of exploitation due to not being forced to accept poor working conditions. Additionally, isolated locations of parlors decrease a worker's safety, and by being isolated, it maintains a customer's desire to remain anonymous, which puts the customer's needs ahead of those, those of workers. We support the notion to create an anti-human trafficking task force uh, that includes various community and advocacy organizations, as well as individuals with lived experience and current sex workers for the, as the insight and overall knowledge coming together could make a big difference. And thank you uh, again for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you very much. Questions of the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, next on the list is uh, Jennifer Hyang from the Chinese Workers Network. So, uh, Council, um, Jennifer wasn't able to make it, so she has asked me to uh, speak instead of the, for the Chinese Workers Network. Okay. Great. So, um, I just want to introduce myself. Uh, I'm a steering member of the Chinese Workers Network. Uh, we're part of the Toronto York Region Labor Council, um, and we represent over 200,000 um, unionized members uh, across the greater Toronto area. Um, so our, our concern really here today, uh, in line with speakers who have previously mentioned, is that this is, uh, this is what, what we're facing here is a potential loss of over 22,000 jobs. Um, we recognize that there is an issue of human trafficking, but that doesn't mean throwing out uh, the baby with the bathwater, so to speak. Um, there are concerns with trafficking, but what we need to ensure in this process is that these jobs, these very important jobs to many newcomer communities, many immigrant communities, many working class communities, that those jobs aren't destroyed or negatively affected because of our concern for the issue of human trafficking. It's very important that, that we keep those two things separate. Um, so in relation to that, we are uh, supporting uh, the motion that was moved earlier, 
which is asking for Labor Council to accept uh, the, the, chain, the adjusted motion with a focus on workers' rights and laborers' rights. Because at the end of the day, what is most important is, is making sure that holistic practitioners, body rubbers have rights and are protected through their rights. That is the best way in which we can empower workers uh, within this field. So again, just reiterating, we shouldn't conflate different issues. Um, there, if there is an issue of human trafficking, that should be dealt with. But what is at stake here is also many people who aren't being trafficked. And if the policy goes the wrong way, what that means is devastation for these communities, those families, uh, and these workers. So um, on behalf of the Chinese, work, uh, Chinese Workers Network of the Toronto York Region Labor Council, um, we're very concerned about this. We hope uh, committee can move this forward. Uh, we'll focus on labor rights uh, driving first. Thank you, sir. Any questions of the deputant? Councillor Karajanis. Um, you identified yourself, I... Yes, I am a steering committee member of the Chinese Workers Network of the Toronto and York Region Labour Council. So are you part of the Toronto and, and, region, and York Region Labour Council? Yes, yes I am. So are, is the, the, the York, Toronto and York Regional Council supportive? Yes. That Je Jennifer Huang, who is a senior community organizer, has asked me to speak on her behalf. I wish to ask Mr. Cartwright, will he be supportive of your initiative? Yes, yes, I believe he would. You believe or you know? I, I know he would. Can you get something in, that for, in writing for us? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'll hold you to it. I'll give Absolutely. You we will send that, send that to you. Thank you. Other questions of the deputy? Councillor Wong Tam, welcome to the committee. Thank Sorry, you. I didn't see you. My apologies. No, that's uh, that's okay, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, um, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. With respect to the uh, the, the, the statements that you've made today, um, the at the core of your concerns, it really has a lot to do with uh, worker protection and worker safety. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah, and so that's that's one of the reasons why you believe, and you have just stated as such, as the Toronto York Labor Council uh, agrees with that position, is that whatever policies come out of City Council, uh, at the heart of it, we should be addressing uh, workplace safety. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Back in the committee, other questions of the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Anurada Degal from the Canadian Women's Federation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My I'm joined if by. I pronounce your first name. You correct. You've pronounced it correctly. Thank you. Uh, but it's the Canadian Women's Foundation. <laughs> what did I say? Federation. It's a common mistake. My apologies. I'm, that's fine. Thank you. My. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague uh, Rudena Buhabeshi also. Okay, I'll get to it. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to appear before the committee and present our thoughts on your report. Uh, we hope our comments will help with the deliberations. As you may already know, the Canadian Women's Foundation is one of the 10 largest women's foundations in the world. We are a collaborator, convener, knowledge mobilizer, and capacity builder. Um, and through playing these roles in the sector and funding groups, we have a comprehensive understanding of the needs of women in Canada, especially we focus on those where the needs are greatest, regionally and nationally. Um, we are encouraged that some of our uh, comments made in writing uh, through the consultation process uh, seem to resonate in the committee, and we would like to also support the suggested modifications as per the May 17th letter to include the human rights and labor rights lens. Our primary concerns are about safety, about uh, centering the experience of those who have the most experience, those who are most concerned with this, that is to say women who work in body rub parlors and holistic centers in your deliberations. And also we would like to uh, consider women's rights and agency. We also want to highlight that when we say women, we include trans and non-binary individuals. Um, so first of all, on safety, um, we would like to make sure that the system that's put into place by the City of Toronto allows women to have a say in how their estate safety is established, and this does not necessarily mean increased regimes of surveillance. In fact, greater levels of oversight, repressive approaches, can make women feel less safe. 
There are important effects of increased surveillance that can end up hurting women. It decreases their trust. Uh, sudden searches and fearing that this will lead to arrest, convictions or fines leads women to fear authorities not to seek out their help. Uh, so we would like to present that increased enforcement will not necessarily lead to increased disclosures of abuses. We encourage the City of T Toronto to consider the least intrusive strategy and we are encouraged by the approach MLS is taking in the report and suggest it continues to build partnerships with community organizations um, and as you mentioned these are only in the beginning phases but we strongly recommend that these continue. These communications, these frontline relationships can lead to greater levels of safety for women and will lead them to ask for help when they need it. We're also committed to hearing from those who are most affected by the policies and the government decisions. So we really encourage the City of Toronto to listen to advocacy groups. These are also citizens of Toronto whose livelihoods are at stake and they should have more than a say in how these regulation changes will affect them. We recommend even further research directly with the women most directly affected. Finally, when it comes to the rights of women, the Canadian Women's Foundation would like to focus on the important, importance of supporting women so that they can pursue employment freely and safely. When women know their rights and can exercise them, they can take control of their lives. Um, we are concerned that shutting down or changing licenses in a way that makes the work onerous or more expensive Sorry, will actually up, rob women of a chance to support themselves. Um, and these are often the most marginalized, marginalized populations. We are worried that their work would be sent underground, making them more vulnerable to exploitation and abuses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, questions of the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much for coming in this afternoon. Uh, next on the list is Mr. Gary James. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Vice Chairman, committee members. I would not want your job. Uh, I just want to let you know how thankful I am that you serve our community and our broader communities in the GTA. And um, I am hearing even more today uh, education that is informing me that your decision is incredibly difficult. Um, I became aware of human trafficking in southern Ontario about nine years ago. I'm a pastor in Newmarket. I had no idea how deep and broad uh, this infection in our society is. For the last eight and a half years, I have been working toward and have successfully co-chaired uh, the creation of a board, a charity uh, that is called You Are Home. We're functioning to provide a safe house for rescued victims of human trafficking in Southern Ontario. It's been a large, long and hard process, but my perspective on this report simply comes from the lens of human trafficking. I'm very concerned uh, about the the sense that the body rub parlors cap would be lifted. I would strongly speak against that. I think that um, that is not helpful. Uh, from a perspective of my personal opinion, I would love to see no body rub parlors in the GTA. I understand that's not going to happen. Uh, I also acknowledge that every uh, facility does not always engage in human trafficking. I, I understand that perspective as well. So I would, I would recommend that uh, the cap for BRPs be uh, remain at 25. You've heard from several other colleagues with whom we, uh, we share in our efforts this afternoon and this morning. Uh, our colleagues share concern for traffic victims uh, and uh, they inform me that the safety and awareness of Canadian laws and human rights for those working in body rope parlors is almost, if not non-existent. And yet these things are, in my opinion, of the utmost importance. The objectification of women and the exploitation of women has gone on for far too long. And I'm a man who's willing to stand and say, I'm against that. I think we should protect their rights. So I recommend uh, that the city employees and bylaw officers be trained on signs of human trafficking, that they be, that they be trained on availability of social services in Toronto, and that uh, basic human rights as they encounter those seeking applications for licensing. They should be trauma-informed. There should be a full package of all this information dispensed to all the applicants. 
uh, these info packages should be translated into multiple languages, the original language of the, uh, the workers. If human trafficking is suspected, then city employees must also know the action steps to take. That the human trafficking hotline number be added to the license for each body rubber so that she can access that number as needed for reporting or asking questions at any time. And I recommend that the BRP and HC owners and operators must also be trained on the signs of human trafficking prior to receiving their licensing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions of the deputy? I saw Councillor Wong Tam's hand. Councillor? Uh, yes, thank you very much for your deputation. Uh, with respect to human trafficking and your claims that it's happening in body rub parlors and the holistic centers, what evidence do you have? I have uh, reports from several organizations that have already spoken today and that have that work in the GTA uh, and work with women. Uh, two survivors have already spoken, given testimony, personal testimony today. Are you aware that in 2017, the City of Toronto Auditors General uh, report uh, identified that there was virtually no human trafficking uh, in uh, the holistic centres and that between 2016 and 2018, there were only five cases that were documented? I was not aware of that, um, but I'm not sure that I would believe that report's authenticity. The, this is the Auditor General's report. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next person to speak is Tim Lambrinos. Oh, what happened to the chair? He stepped away. That was for him. Um, we wanted to just a quick announcement that on Sunday, the Emory Village um, Business Improvement Area is launching the opening of the bicycle path. For Are you ready, sir? Yes, I am. This Fantastic. Is you got three minutes. Please go. All right. Is it a third? Oh, that's the right way. That's the right way. Oh, you're correct. So it's just a quick uh, announcement uh, before I start. I'll do three minutes. The Emory Village um, is opening up a bicycle path that is connecting communities with the Etobicoke Community Council. I think Francis Nunziata and Stephen Holiday, and that's it. So this is Sunday. If you're there, you're all welcome. You got two and a half minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, so the my recommendations I'll start with. Um, just recommending that the committee defer this item until such time as the effective stakeholders, such as the Emory Village Business Improvement Area, and on behalf of the Doak Heights Business Improvement Area, receive consultation. That the staff also be required to meet, consult with the BIA or any other BIA that is within or partially within a designated E-Zone, which is in their report, and three, that the staff uh, be requested to launch an online survey for public input specifically on the topics of staff proposed approaches being considered in an effort to assist the committee to engage the pulse of the public on this matter. They've done it before, and if you want to add in, councillors be consulted as well. I want to start by thanking uh, Mr. Grant and Ms. Cook for taking this issue on, and I always say in a diligent way, we agree on everything at times, so Tracy, we agree to disagree. Um, there are some things um, that I had recommended pr prior to, and um, such as the panic alert buttons, and that's all part of safety. And we heard from Councillor Wong Tam today as well, that and from the the workers that safety is important, but crime's not something that we're going to accept. And with our business improvement area, to we just got designation as an E zone, as an employment zone with the provincial party, um, with Premier Doug Ford. And we would request that staff be, consult with BIAs on this matter rather than to delete requirements, delete the health check, delete the, all these other things. The sign I thought was important that I made a recommendation to previously, the metal sign that your staff is familiar with on the front, that was not considered in this and I think it should. But um, again, I, I just wrap up, um, Mr. Chairman with the announcement that you're welcome to the, with Razor Ruddick was here earlier to invite you to the, the bicycle path, you know, so you're most welcome this Sunday. And again, um, I'm hoping that one of the committee members would move or amend um, any of these three recommendations before you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thanks.
Uh, next on the list is Mr. Aaron Yu, Ontario Holistic Licensed Practitioners Association. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. You have three minutes whenever you're ready. Okay, and uh, today we are discussing about the uh, holistic license being removed or not. So I start with uh, from a realistic point of view. Let us look into and compare the advantages and disadvantages between license and unlicensed holistic industry. First, the report, the government report itself already states clearly that licensed holistic industry, holistic centers have advantage over unlicensed holistic centers. On page nine of this report, the first paragraph, it says that, I quote, Many jurisdictions survey told MLS staff that they also have in enforcement challenges with unlicensed establishments, including holistic centers <coughs> providing body rub surface coal. So if most of the unlicensed cities surveys like Brampton, London, Markham, Mississauga, New Market and Ottawa already told the government that unlicensed industry, holistic industry, have greater problems and challenges than licensed holistic industry. We are wondering why Toronto City Council still propose to remove the license system. We sincerely ask the City Council look into those researches, researches and findings and respect the objective results of those surveys. If City of Toronto do not care for surveys and facts, we can only wonder, is there any other motivations behind this proposal? Is it because they are vulnerable groups? Most of them are aged over 40s to 60s. Is it because most of them are using English as a second language compared to other adult entertainment industries? Or is it because they are mostly Asians? Sorry, please forgive us to have these questions in our head. After all, Canadian government very rarely remove the license system of an established industry. Secondly, Canada is a free, respectful, humanitarian, democratic, and multicultural country. When any responsible democratic government decides to move, remove a license of an industry... Sorry, that, sir. Can I ask you to wrap up, please? Okay. Um, the governments assure people that after removing the license, the industry will become much better than licensed. The report did not tell people that after removing holistic license, all the problems like the body rock industry, including human trafficking, health, safety, unauthorized service, all these problems will go away. In fact, sorry, many sorry. surveys indicate sorry. that after removing the finish. license, it will provide quicker risk of those problems. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, any questions of the deputy? Uh, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much, um, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, how many uh, holistic license centers do you represent, and how many workers uh, do you represent? I don't have a, a holistic center. I belong to the Ontario Holistic License Practitioners Association. I'm a volunteer, but I know this industry, you know. Who, who are you speaking for today? Ontario Holistic. How many members do you have? Members, we have 2,200 uh, employees here. Yeah. 2,200 uh, yeah. employees. And um, the, the 2017 Auditor General's report 
uh, is the, the document that sort of brought us to where we are today. Is that exactly, right? yes. And uh, in the Auditor General's report uh, from 2017, uh, how many cases of human trafficking did the Auditor General identify? We have to be very careful. We should not mix body rock industry with holistic center industry. In holistic center industry, as far as we know, we spoke to our members and do a quick general survey. Very few cases, or next to none, human trafficking happen in the holistic license industry. But in body rock powder industry, yes, it did happen. Because in holistic industry, our average age of the practitioner are age over 40 to 60. Who would human traffic 40 to 60 year old woman or man? But in the body rock industry, the age mostly between 19 to 35, they are younger age. They are more vulnerable to human trafficking. In licensed holistic industry, they are all mature, sophisticated women. And because of the screening by the police background check and also the licensing department, uh, very few or next to none cases of the, uh, of the petitioner are being trafficked into our licensed holistic industry. So my final question for you is how do you reconcile uh, the observations that, that you have just purported today about that there's virtually no human trafficking in the holistic centers versus what other speakers have said and that they say that there are statistics that back them up that human trafficking is happening in the holistic centers. We are just being objective and realistic. We welcome all the association and the government to provide us the actual figure and statistic, but we have to distinguish between licensed holistic industry, then body rock industry, and also some other adult entertainment service like escort, like, uh, you know, alcohols, whatever, right? So in our industry, the feature is our women, our workers are between 40 to 60. They all have legal working status. Okay, so who will human traffic 40 to 60 year old woman? I, I'm sure there are. Right, Councillor Wong Tam. Thank you. Red, I'm not going to argue three. that point, but thank you. Thank you. Are there questions of the deputant? Councillor Nunziata. I didn't realize 40 was old. Sorry? I didn't realize 40 was old. Um, uh, wow. Anybody over 40? <laughs> you're done, you're done. Um, so, just a question. Yeah. Huh? Or is it, Maybe question. the seniors home, John. What, what are the employees, your employees? Uh, what, what are, I, I'm sorry, they're talking, you know, sorry. Can you just repeat it again because they're noisy. What the, the employees, what are their, um, uh, approximately, the, um, their salary? Their salary? Well, what, what do they get paid an hour? Well, they get their self-employed. They get paid by each individual customer account. Right. Okay. So they have flexible working hours. They have absolute freedom of choice to work or not to work. None of them are being forced into the uh, working or into the industry, none of them. So, approximately, what would they get paid? Uh, it depends on the on, on the business, right? But average, average, they make about three to five thousand a month. Yeah. Okay, and do they get paid cash? Uh, either way, they get paid by cash or they get paid by check. You know. So, so do they pay taxes? They do. They do. All righty. Other questions? Other questions of the deputy? Councillor Karagiannis. Uh, thank you. Sir, how many associations are there? How many? Well, associations are there? Uh, uh, we, are the, uh, we are new association because of this crisis. We formed this association. So you but around, around there may be about 20s, you know. 20? Before that, I heard another number of 40. Well, I, uh, my understanding is about around 20s. Through the chair, your association uh, represents holistic 
or body rub? Holistic. How many holistic uh, uh, establishments are there? 389 to be exact. 389 to be exact. And how many of them are you representing? Well, we have represent around 150. Yeah. Around or? About 150, yeah. Specific number? Because maybe? we are new, we don't have, because we are new association, uh -huh. we are still in the recruiting. Are you self-controlled? Self I mean? Self, are you self-controlled? If somebody steps out of line, what do you do? Well, we don't control their behavior. This is the MLS, you know, the, ah. their jurisdiction. Okay, so your association does what again? We are associate does advice, education, and trying to communicate, help them, because most of them, they don't speak the first language, English. Okay. And the bylaw today, they don't have a full translation. The chair, in do, the you charge, do you charge them for your services? Pardon me? Through the chair, do you charge them for your services? Is there a fee to be a member of your association? No, not right now, no. Not right now? Not right now. But, but are you going to have charge future in- We don't know. We have to go for the board of director meeting, yes. Board of directors meeting? Yes. All right. So in the board of directors meeting, if I can be blunt, how many um, people are there that are part of your industry? Well, right now, the, we have seven directors in the, in the board, yeah. Seven directors? Seven directors, yes. The makeup of the directors? Pardon me? The makeup of the directors? Well, they are mostly uh, holistic centers, owners, and petitioners. Okay. So the priest blesses his beard. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Any other questions of the deputy? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Uh, the next uh, deputant is Ms. Julie Neubauer from Covenant House, Toronto. Julie Neubauer from Covenant House. If you could hold her name down, I can give her a call. I know that she was uh, intended to return, so let me check for her safety and if you'll okay. please move forward. All right. Thank you, Cassandra. Uh, next, Kamala Kempadu from the Department of Social Science, York University. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Jazz McEwen. Um, this is a fellow colleague of mine, Sarah Kasilis. Um, I'm here to deliver a petition of solidarity for members of the academic community in Toronto. Unfortunately, the professors leading these efforts need to leave early today, so I am stepping in to deliver this message. The entirety of our letter has been submitted to you already, but I will be reading some excerpts. May I continue? Yes, you have three minutes. Great. You Thank you. It is vital that we foreground the importance of the views and perspectives of holistic practitioners and body rub workers in any by law changes. We as academics wish to express our concerns with the MLS bylaw recommendations in support of immigrant and migrant workers in this sector. It has been expressed by holistic and body rub practitioners who are predominantly Asian and migrant women that removing, that removing the holistic licensing framework altogether will negatively impact more than 2,300 families and result in loss of job security and income. The alternative licensing changes being suggested by the MLS are not viable for holistic centers and practitioners, as the body rub bylaws are incredibly restrictive, discriminatory, and many workers cannot qualify or afford the body rub license. The City Council Committee should be striving to protect and support its racialized and migrant worker communities so that they are able to work in safety and with dignity free of unnecessary interventions. People who offer holistic, therapeutic, and massage services need to be able to do so legally and safely and to have more opportunities to work, not fewer. It is important to counter the assumption that Asian and immigrant and migrant women in holistic and body rub centers are trafficked persons. It is also important to note that the majority of workers in this industry are mature women with agency who are not trafficked persons forced to perform erotic labor. The issues presented during this bylaw review reinforce that this is part of a larger conversation around justice, race, and marginalization. This is a matter of labor rights, workers' rights, and public health. 
Holistic and body rub workers deserve access to safe workplaces, health services, and fair employment. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the deputant? Deputants. Councillor Karagiannis. Uh, the, the introduction that you made, Chair, was something from York University. Would I be correct in that? Um, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf and proxy of my professor, Kamala Kempadu, who had to leave earlier as the meeting went longer than expected. Um, the petition that we've submitted has the signatures of several professors from York University, Ryerson, and University of Toronto. Kamala Kempadu. Department of Social Science, York University. Yes, she's a professor of social sciences. Uh, she's not here. No, she was here earlier, but she had an appointment. So I am reading excerpts from our petition, which we have submitted in full already. Yep. So, um, He's having trouble. am I to understand that you're supportive? Of the, the, this industry supports 2,200 families. This is what that is our understanding from earlier consultations with uh, the directors from the Holistic Practitioners Association. So that would be the gentleman that spoke before? Yes, Aaron. Okay, new association supporting 2200 and you're rubber stamping it. Pardon? Thank you. Councillor, she didn't hear your question. I'm not understanding the question. Okay, my, my question is, New association, you spoke to them and you were rubber stamping what they told you, correct? I'm, are you asking me if I put a rubber stamp on what they've told me? Yes. We are in support of their workers' rights and yes, the numbers that they have You're provided us with and statement. provided you with. You're rubber stamping their statements, yes or no? Correct or not incorrect? We are in support of their perspectives. I thank you. Thank you. Sorry, any other questions to the deputants before we... No? Okay, thank you very much, ladies. Uh, next, Mr. Justin Kong with the Chinese-Canadian National Council Toronto Chapter. I'm looking for Mr. Justin Kong, Chinese-Canadian National Council Toronto Chapter. Uh, I'm going to defer to my colleague who will speak later. Sorry, you can't defer. Are you Mr... Yes, that's me. And my colleague will speak later. Are you Mr. Kong? Yes, that's me. Yes. So you either have to speak now. Sorry. Yes. And you? Yeah, my organization will speak later. The other organization will speak later. Yeah. Okay. okay, Mr. Uh, Noel D. Jerry. Mr. Noel D. Jerry. Okay. Uh, Ms. Anna Willits. Hello. Good afternoon. You have three minutes whenever Hi. you're ready. Thanks. Hello. Thanks for the chance to speak today. My name is Anna Willits. I've been working on women's, workers, migrants, and other human rights issues since I moved to Toronto in 1982, and I am the proud recipient of two City of Toronto Human Rights Awards. I worked for 20 years with the Toronto Rape Crisis Centre Multicultural against Women Against Rape and have been a faculty member with the Assaulted Women's and Children's Counselor Advocate Program at George Brown College since 2000, but I'm here speaking on behalf of myself today. I'm here to speak in support of amendments that were sent to you in uh, uh, Councillor Wong Tam's May 17th letter uh, rec uh, regarding the recommendations and staff report regarding holistic centres and body rub parlours. My remarks are also informed by what I've learned from speaking directly with workers in the industry and their advocates. Holistic centers are important sources of income and livelihood for over 2,200 workers and their families, the majority of which are immigrant Asian women, as you've heard. Many Torontonians assume that women working in these centers are being trafficked, but the women themselves who are doing this work say that they are not being trafficked. And as Councillor Wong Tam pointed out, the Auditor General report in 2017 also confirmed that. They want to be able to work safely, though, without legal sanction and social stigma. They want and deserve to have full access to their rights as workers under the law. 
These workers want social workers and faith groups to stop making their support for them conditional on women leaving their employment. And forcing businesses to close takes job, jobs away from workers. In this case, 2,200 workers equals the number uh, that GM wants to lay off, and we certainly know what an impact that's going to have on that community. And I would argue that the loss of 2,200 jobs in this community would also have a great impact, and certainly on their families. Loss of employment undermines these women's independence and increases their vulnerability to abuse, exploitation, and deportation in some cases. Those who seek to protect these workers and women facing up exploitation would do better to uh, uh, support their call for an end to the violence they say they face on the job right now, which includes abuse from law enforcement, uh, robbery, and sometimes assaults by clients. And they would uh, promote the issuances of licenses that allow the use of tools such as cameras and locked doors that would enhance their safety. But the women doing the work are actually the experts. I am not. The, the workers employed in holistic centres and body rub parlours must be the ones to advise city committees about policies that will affect them. The city must protect the labour rights, health, safety and well-being of workers in holistic centres and body rub parlours. They are no less deserving of protection than any other worker in Toronto. These workers contribute to our economy by spending money they earn in their communities, paying taxes, etc. They already face gender and language barriers. If their work is criminalised and ended, many will feel forced to go underground into unsafe circumstances to earn a living. Short-sighted licensing amendments are not an effective way to help women who already face challenges. The city must use a labour rights, community and social services approach to support these workers. And so I do support the amendments as suggested by Councillor Wong Tam that City Council adopt the following principles for regulating the body rub and holistic centre industry Very by ensuring up, the labour rights, workplace safety, health safety and well-being of persons, by using consumer and worker protection. And, uh, and on and on, as uh, Councillor Wong Tam has said. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Sorry, yes, Mr. Uh, Karagiannis, Councillor Karagiannis. Yeah. Through the chair, you said that um, 2,200 jobs. There is, so that, that comes out to about four practitioners per, per establishment. Yes, is that the math? Okay. Um, have you visited any of the establishments? Have no, you, I have not visited the establishment. Okay. Have you been in any of the establishments to see the conditions that these women work under? No, sir, I have not. Uh, you also said that uh, these women pay taxes. It's uh, my understanding if they purchase goods in our community, they're paying taxes. My understanding if they take the TTC, they are my, contributing to our economy. Is, uh, the if they are sending their kids to our schools and buying them lunches, they are contributing to our economy. My understanding is through the chair that if you work, you pay taxes. Are you, uh, are you familiar or can you certify that these the folks, the 2200 that you're claiming the number, that they all, these, all these people pay taxes? If they are buying goods and services in our city, sir, they are paying taxes, absolutely. Are they paying taxes? If they are renting a property from a landlord, they are probably contributing to the property tax. Are they paying taxes for the work that they do? No, they're not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is that a rhetorical question, Councillor? Okay. Councillor Wong Tam, questions of the deputy. Yes, thank you very much. Um, to the deputy and through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, the majority of the workers uh, in the holistic centres are Asian women, is that correct? That's my understanding, yes. And uh, with respect to the, uh, the opportunities for employment, uh, especially for those who are newcomers that don't speak English, um, how, how readily available are, are those jobs out there that do not exploit those workers? That's exactly the problem. Uh, we know in Toronto, and we've seen many studies, that the, gra the gap between uh, immigrant communities, racialized communities, and uh, white non-immigrant communities is widening and widening. We know that racialized people, uh, especially if their first language is not English, face incredible discrimination, whether it comes to housing or work or anything else. I have uh, managed a project at George Brown for seven or for 10 years, where we work with women, uh, low-income women who are trying to break into trades and other kinds of work, and it's incredibly difficult 
difficult. It's difficult to get the training that you need. It's difficult to be able to keep your family and your body and soul together while you're getting that training to be able to qualify for jobs that pay a decent wage. We unfortunately have a provincial government that's determined to keep wages down so low that even if people are working full-time at minimum wage jobs, they can't uh, support their families. So all of these things hit, hit these workers the worst. There have been some uh, statements that have been made today about uh, the human trafficking and sex work. Uh, because most of these practitioners are, are Asian women, uh, do you believe that there may be some assumptions being made that the practitioners of holistic, uh, in these holistic centers uh, are, are engaged in sex work uh, based on their, their racial background, based on the gender? I think that um, I can't speak to exactly what everybody's assuming, but I do know that uh, whenever we're talking about the work of racialized immigrant people, of people who are very marginalized, their voices are the last to be heard. So I don't know that we have heard enough from the women who are actually doing the work to know exactly what their conditions are and what the work is that they're doing. Uh, I do know that there are a lot of people who are very, very uncomfortable and um, with sex work of any kind, and so it's very easy to conflate um, women who are vulnerable with vulnerability to being exploited in that work and that sex work is seen by definition as exploitative. I think that's a bigger conversation. I think there's another committee going to be meeting about that next week. Um, but. Uh, yes, I think that it's very easy for people to make assumptions about um, the work that migrant women are doing, that Asian women are doing, the stereotypes we have about Asian uh, people and Asian women in this society uh, do conflate uh, being a, an immigrant Asian woman with doing sex work. So I think all of those stereotypes may be at play. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Wong Thank Kim. You. Bringing it back in the committee. Any other questions of the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, person listed on <laughs> the next person listed is Louise Alberto Meda of the Anti-Human Trafficking Program and Migrants Workers Mobile Program. Thank you. Um, my name is Luis Alberto Mata. I work by, for the FCJ Refugee Center. Um, I am the anti-human trafficking program coordinator. As a human trafficking worker, I have some words to say. The review of the bylaws uh, to regulate holistic centers and body wrap parlors should not be done under the lens of human trafficking, unless, perhaps, with the only exception, when the case is considered human trafficking for labor exploitation. Uh, I have found very problematic when the authorities addressed a situation where sex workers are involved, for instance, can be at the, at the parlor, because not all of them have been trafficked. They are working many times, or most of the times, by choice, but they have been abused, they have been exploited. Um, this regulation should be guided instead by principles that ensure the labor rights. I better say this regulation should be done under the lens, the lens of human rights. Um, why? I understand the women working in the parlors are also by my understanding, migrant workers. And migrant workers <laughs> live in this country uh, under immigration precarious status. Here, until you get the, the citizenship, you live in precarious status with any other status, immigration status in this country. Then, in the FCJ Refugee Center, we advocate for, the, we advocate for those who are living under precarious status, immigration precarious status. We are talking here about international cases. We see in the horizon more and more workers working under, underground, then more easy victims of abuses and labor exploitation if this kind of regulation, repressive regulation, is imposed. Therefore, we recommend 
uh, that any change, ch changes must be done in accordance with the access without fear policy. Therefore, recognize these women as a workers subject of human rights subjects of the labor rights. To use labor rights and community social services approach to support people who may be in vulnerable situation, exploited or trafficked in a trafficked situation. Uh, people on the field, this is something that is very important, people on the field know and experience the reality. Then, please make this by law review in real consultation with holistic centers and, and practitioners. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions of the deputant? Councilor Karagiannis. Thank you, sir, for coming to make the deputation. Really appreciate it. Uh, have you been in the holistic uh, centers? Have you visited them yourself? <clears throat> I have visited, yes. Can you describe to us the conditions? As a, as a human trafficking, as a social worker working for the FCJ Refugee Center, yes. Can you describe what they look like outside? Can women inside, can they see outside? Can outside, can people see in? Sorry, can you, can you repeat the question more Is clear? the premises, are they able to, for people to see inside? Are they, are, they, are, they, are they able to see inside? No. Mm -hmm. No, so they're all dark. Most of the time. Most of the time. So if something is hidden behind closed doors, what do you think is going on in there? I will answer you with a question. Sir, I'm asking the question, sir. No, but, but I, I'm, I'm going to answer you the question. I don't answer the question, sir, I understand. But I'm asking you the question. If you address the situation uh, with a, a repressive way, instead to see this in a holistic human rights approach, labor approach, then you will be make more damage. You are going to affect more the situation instead yes, to solve sir. the situation. Sir, besides um, the services, the holistic services that are completely you know, like you cannot see inside, cannot see outside. Is there any other businesses that you have gone to that employ uh, people that are, are probably migrant immigrants uh, working that are they completely dark? Have you ever gone to any other, other establishments? Have you, have you, what, sorry? Let me try this again, sir. <clears throat> These establishments, you agreed with me that there's absolutely no visibility inside or outside. Okay. Any other establishments, any other work that, that employs Migrant workers, are the migrant workers working under the same conditions that you cannot see inside and outside? You must have visited their shops, their operations, right? Have you? I will say that those people should be subject of labor rights and the employment standards. Let me repeat the question in the minute that I have. In the body rob establishments, in the holy the, the, holistic, the holistic establishments, mm -hmm. there is a film on the window and you cannot see inside and they cannot see outside. Okay. They're migrant workers. We agreed upon that. Number two, any other places that you have visited that migrant workers work, are they working under the same conditions? Yes or no? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you then want these migrant workers to work under these conditions while the other migrant workers are under different conditions. So you're not advocating the same for the workers at Holistic Rob, Holistic Rob Partners to work under the same conditions, correct? I'm advocating for human beings, subject or rights, or labor rights and human rights. Is the, is the individual that works in a Holistic uh, Body Rob Partner, is, is that individual have the same rights as other rights of people? Of course. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, and just following up on Councillor Kerry Janice's uh, sorry, uh, line of... Sorry, sorry it's okay. Sorry. Uh, just, sorry. <laughs> that's okay, thank you. Um, just following up on Councillor Kerry Janice's line of questioning that uh, human trafficking would happen in the, in the cloak of darkness. Uh, human trafficking, uh, the exploitation of migrant workers, does that not happen on farms in the agricultural sector? It's happening in many parts, yes. Does it happen uh, not in domestic work? Yes. And does it not happen in the construction industry? It's happening in the construction sector. 
And, uh, and th those sectors where we see human trafficking, where we see migrant workers, um, uh, labor exploited, uh, they're not cloaked in, in darkness. They're not wrapped in windows that you cannot see through. It's happening in broad daylight. It's happening every day underneath our noses. Is that not correct? You, you cannot see with the same lens everything. Okay. But it's happening. It's happening in those sectors. It's happening in exploitation, yes. And, and yet government is actually one of the actors that is enabling that to happen. There are systemic issues that, that provoke this situation, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. That was extremely helpful. Point of order. Yes, uh, it, it has happened a couple of times. If the outside councillor wants to ask questions, I think that that person should put their name forward before you ask the the, uh, the chairs. Uh, the, the the Sorry, I, I think the outside. Thank you, councillor. I thank you first. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, next on the list of deputants is uh, Lisa Lai. Lisa Lai. Lisa Lee, thank you. Lisa Lee. Lisa Lee. Nope. Okay. Uh, next on the list after that is Brianna Grease showing up for Racial Justice Toronto. Is this the right one? <laughs> yep. Either side, pick a chair, any chair. Thank you. You have uh, three minutes whenever you're ready. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Brianna Graves, and I'm speaking on behalf of Showing Up for Racial Justice Toronto, an organization committed to undermining white support for white supremacist institutions and systems, and we work to support and collaborate with local and national racial justice and decolonization organizing efforts um, led by black, indigenous, and people of color organizers and communities. And I'm here to speak in response to staff recommendations about holistic centers and body rub parlors. Um, holistic centers constitute a critical source of income for two, uh, over 2,000 mostly Asian immigrant women who are employed as holistic practitioners. A report released by the Wellesley Institute's Color of Poverty recently revealed that racialized immigrant women in Ontario experienced a heightened risk of poor working conditions and have disproportionately lower incomes. We recognize inaccessible and discriminatory licensing structures and requirements as a racial justice issue that will obstruct holistic practitioners' right to work and make a living. These changes will further marginalize individuals who already face employment-related discrimination, including language barriers, racism, and a lack of professional recognition once arriving in Canada. And, um, in addition to increasing holistic practitioners' economic vulnerability, repressive regulations will increase the incidence of underground work and subject workers to more exploitative conditions. Any changes to bylaws governing holistic practitioners and body rub workers must be guided by, the, by them, the practitioners themselves, um, and must include a labor rights lens. Uh, poor working conditions are often conflated with trafficking, and sex work is often conflated with trafficking. And critical to meaningful understanding of the situation is an analysis of the ways in which the city bylaws have been, in many cases, operationalized to create the poor working conditions that city workers claim to be trying to prevent. Any changes to bylaws must uh, not impact holistic practitioners' right to work and support their families. And the restrictive model that has been deployed uh, so far to address vulnerable working conditions and suspicions of trafficking must absolutely be replaced with a labor rights framework and an approach that centers culturally sensitive community and social services that take a person-centered approach to support. City resources should be also be mobilized to end the discrimination against holistic practitioners, body rub workers, and also sex workers who, regardless of employment, have the right to a workplace free from harassment and discrimination. And um, I also support the amendments brought forward on May 17th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions of the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much for coming in this yes. afternoon. Uh, next on the list is Ms. Linda Baudouin, Advocate for Child Protection and Public Safety. Afternoon, you have three minutes whenever you're ready. Hello, thank you for um, giving me this time. First, I'd like to uh, run down your list here that I noticed something. Number 15, Tim 
Lambrinos, Emory Village Business Improvement Area. Well, I don't know why he didn't uh, describe himself as he is. Tim Labrianos is the executive of director of the Adult Entertainment Association of Canada and is a registered lobbyist in Toronto. All right. I For anyone that wants to know. All right. Sorry, you can stick to your deputation on the topic, please. Sure. But uh, we need some uh, correct information on there, right? Thank you. Um, I have some experience about the adult entertainment business. Uh, in fact, I was underage in that environment, and I won't get into that. Um, for decades, brothels have been using the pretense of body rubs and massage parlors to do their business. Today I'm here because Emmanuel Jacques, we need not forget where he was found on the top of a body rub parlor on Young Street, okay? I don't want to see another child or, an, or a woman who's victimized. And so I would, uh, my recommendations, if I could have them, probably wouldn't be uh, taken seriously, but I'd like to see them all closed because it's only exploitation of a person. Coming from a very abusive uh, upbringing, lost, and easily recruited and exploited, I can say that the government um, makes victims that are not aware, that are taught all the wrong things, makes them think that it's okay because there's a permit. So I would, I, I'm just lost for words and I just don't want to see these places shut down because I've seen too much stuff happening in the adult entertainment business and just too much stuff. And I don't, I don't agree with any of those operations, okay? I have tons of stories that I wouldn't even want to share. But we need to remember Emmanuel Jacques, who was found on Young Street above Charlie's Angels, okay, by men who tortured him, raped him, and murdered him. And his killer is trying to get out of jail. And this is all from being found on top of the massage parlor. The, the bodyguard for the massage parlor was one of the men who took the life of Emmanuel Jacques. Okay. Sorry, I need you to wrap up, please. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Any questions of the deputy? None. Thank you very much for coming in this afternoon. Appreciate your presentation. Uh, next on the list is uh, Eileen Lamb, Butterfly Asian and Migrant Sex Workers Support Network. Good afternoon. You have three minutes whenever you're ready. Okay. Good afternoon, so I'm Elin Lam, the Executive Director of Butterfly. It is an organization organized by and support workers in holistic center, body rock parlors, and sex industry in Toronto. We are supporting the motion um, moved by Christian Wong Tam on May 17 to make sure the um, labor rights of the workers should be protected and the consultation should listen to the holistic petitioner and body rock parlor. We are here because this policy change will affect the livelihood, labor rights, and working condition of more than 2,500 workers in holistic center and body rock parlor. Okay. And as many okay. deputants have mentioned, majority of them are Asian women and immigrant women in Canada so that they are very meet this job for their livelihood. Butterfly have reached out more than 500 workers every year. Um, they told us that they are neither the trafficker or traffic victim. The community member told us that they want their safety, labor rights, and employment rights protected. Shutting down the business that they employ them, implement repressive bylaws, would not protect them. They will create more precarious working conditions and increase the workers' vulnerability to violence and exploitation. I would like to share some code with you. I am a 55 years old woman. I just use my hand to support myself and my family. The city should respect my contribution 
and support us. They should not see us as problem or enemy. What can I do if I lost my job? It is important to emphasize that majority of holistic talent is offering holistic service. There are some small number of workers, they may offer body rub service because of different reason, and they are not able to assess the body rub parlor license because of the stigmatization and also the overregulation of the business. We support the staff recommendation to conduct further studies about the impact of the proposed change, but the city should listen to the worker to ensure that by law make decent work accessible and they protect the labor rights of the worker. We know that the city staff have paid a lot of effort to listen to the worker during the consultation, so we hope that we can still work together in the fall coming change that we can work together, that you can listen to the vo voices and, and consult the worker to inform the policy. Workers actions, workers in holistic center, body rub parlors and sex industry are the residents of Toronto who live, work and contribute to our society. So you need to remember that actually have a lot of residents in Toronto supporting them. So in last year, there is a community event, 400 people have signed a petition to support the worker in two days. So more than 2,500 families will be affected by the policy change. We, are, we know that many workers are worried that when they lost the license, then they will lose the job. They are not able to Great. support themselves and family. Great, I need so you to that, wrap up, please. Yeah. So we really hope that the community member will accept the motion moved by Christian Wong Tam and to use the labor rights as the guiding principle and ensure the labor rights, safety, wellness of the workers and consult the workers um, in holistic centre and body rub parlor during all the consultation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions of the document? <laughs> Councillor Karagiannis. Are you familiar with the term world traveller in the community? So, uh, I don't know what you mean, but I travel from different country. I go every place well, all the time. What, I, so. what I'm told, and maybe you can... I don't know what is your meaning, my meaning, but what I want to tell you today is Excuse the me. importance I'm, of the I'm safety the and working rights Allow of the worker. Allow me to ask the question, please. What I've been told, the term world traveler, is somebody that starts from uh, the Orient, comes to Toronto, from Toronto... <laughs> from Toronto goes to New York, New York goes to San Francisco, up to Vancouver, into um, UK and then to uh, and then Australia and then back home. I can show you my passport. I travel a lot also, so I travel more than 20 countries in one year. So that I, I believe all of you will do so. But I think today we want to save the time to focus on how we can make the workers safe, how we can make the women still can survive, and in the holistic center, I, I, not only the women but also the I men. I think from your aggressive tone that you must be very familiar with the term, and I thank you for making the difference. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Councillor Karagiannis. Chair, if I offended the, uh, the, the, the deputy, my apologies, but you're certainly familiar with the terminology. And, and you so coming Counsel aggressive at Counselor me. Councillor Karagiannis. So, Councillor. So, Councillor, right now we're asking questions of the deputy, not asking them. I not accusing them things or explaining things them. if not you so, counselor can i finish i'm talking i'm the chair I ask you to follow the rules <laughs> i might want to point out to you counselor that was following the rules no i don't think you were right. thank you counselor thank you sir and i also ask people the rules that we have here uh we ask you to refrain from applause thank you Thank you. Any other questions? Sorry, Councillor Holliday. Sorry? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Lam. Um, and you're from Butterfly. Yes. Now, are you speaking just on, your, on behalf of yourself or on behalf of the organization? On behalf of the organization. So Butterfly is a sex worker lead organization, but we also work with the people in Holistic Centre with the partnership with different organizations. Yes. Understood. So you've got a, a fairly wide uh, range of people that you work with. I just wanted to understand a little bit from the perspective of the policy. Do you support more or less regulation, and in particular when it comes to holistic centers? 
So, of course, so that we can see what is the purpose of the regulation, right? So, but what we see now, the regulation is imposing a lot of regulation, make the people difficult to work. For example, endangers the safety. For example, not allow the people to lock the door, so that make the people more dangerous. So, and I think that uh, many workers is worried that when the license removed, they are not able to work anymore. So, I think right. that's why we are here so right so I don't mean the the little grains of the the regulation and I understand we have to work through that but just the concept of taking away the regulation completely becomes an unlicensed area do you support keeping some regulations in place or taking them all I, away I think what we see is we have a lot of uncertainty because um, what we see is the body rock parlor is over-regulated and many excessive regulations make the people not possible to work. And the proposal of the city is very unclear, so that's why it's the panic and also the worry of the worker. Any change of the policy, whether that will be make them cannot work anymore. So, and I think this is very important to consult the worker. So the worker is telling you that why they worry about remove the license. So I think this is very important that the staff is continues to consult the worker to see what model will be the best for the worker. Okay, now you mentioned the body rub parlor, but I want to stay with the holistics. Yeah. So do you support some regulation or none at all? I think we need to have further consultation of the worker. And now right. why the worker won the rec want the license because there will create the uncertainty whether we move the license people will lost the job I think that okay. will be so and how the law should be regulated we have a whole bunch of workers here so that they are the experts so they need to be consulted and and yeah and then as a community organization we are still working with the community to find out what is the best for them like now in terms of butterfly does the group have a position on the cap of 25, do you want to see a cap stay or have more body rub parlors? So in principle, we, we support the staff report to remove the cap because this is make some of the worker, they feel that they want to apply the body rub license, but it's not possible. But of course, this also need to a lot of change of the body rub regulation because it's make people not able to work. But um, we also have the joint submission with other sex worker organization to support that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much for coming in this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, I have uh, Keynes Lin, the Chinese Canadian National Council Toronto chapter. I just want to remind you that there's no applause in committee. Yes, and I just reminded everybody yeah. that about two minutes ago. And they just Thank applauded. You. Yep. So you're on Dixie now? Dixie Lou. Dixie Lou. Is that who you call? Because you just did a lean. Yeah. Is this Dixie? Yep. Sorry, Dixie Lou? I'm Kenneth. Kenneth Lin from Chinese okay, sorry, National I Council. One. My apologies. Should okay. I still go? Or right ahead. You have three minutes, and then I'll go back to the previous deputy in the list. Thank you. Good afternoon. I would like to first thank the General Government and Licensing Committee for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Kenneth Lin, and I am from the Chinese Canadian National Council Toronto Chapter. We are in an organization in support of labor rights, addressing worker exploitation and abuse in sectors not only in holistic centers, but also, for example, in grocery store workers. I'm also an Asian immigrant woman living here in Toronto. I'm here to share my concerns on the proposed recommendations to the Body Rub Parlor and Holistic Centre bylaws brought forth to you in the Municipal Licensing and Standards Report. In particular, I am concerned with the impact of the removal of the license requirements for holistic centres and practitioners and on the 2200, so that's 2200 immigrant women holistic practitioners who work and live in Toronto. While I am also an immigrant woman living in Toronto, my reality is drastically different from the immigrant Asian woman working in holistic centres because I am fluent in English, have a post-secondary education from Canada, and therefore I am able to easily have a job to earn a livable income in this expensive city of Toronto we all call home. This reality is so drastically different for over 90% of the 2,200 workers in holistic centres. 
Over 90% of the workers in holistic centers are immigrant middle-aged Asian women who have limited employment opportunities outside of holistic centers due to their li limited English skills, and yet they must earn a living to support themselves and their families. Working as holistic practitioners in holistic centers is a ridiculously important source of income and livelihood for the workers and their families. They are wor worried they will not be able to work anymore after the city removes this license. Just as I am able to speak and be heard here as residents of Toronto, I believe their rights, voices, and contributions should also be respected. While city staff are recommending that the city council adopt principles of ensuring the health, safety, and well-being of persons working in body rub parlors, I am urging the city to protect the health, safety, and well-being and labor rights of holistic practitioners working holistic centers too. Any change to bylaws should not impose requirements that prevent workers in holistic centers from continuing to work. By shutting down businesses and taking away jobs from workers, Asian immigrant women in Toronto will be further marginalized into more vulnerable conditions just to survive. In such precarious conditions, the women will be put at further risk of abuse and exploitation. I do not want that for other Asian immigrant women living in Toronto. And my organization, Chinese Canadian National Council Toronto Chapter, also do not want that for Asian women living in Toronto. I asked the city to consult with the holistic centers and practitioners before removing the license requirements for holistic centers and practitioners. I asked for the city to ensure health, safety, and well-being and labor rights of workers in holistic centers. In essence, I asked for the city to support the amendments to the municipal licensing and Thanks, standards recommendations proposed by Councillor Christian Wong Tam on May 17. This includes supporting the labor rights in the principle and with consultation with the workers. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, just to remind everybody, no clapping. If you want to go like this, I'm good with that. Just no clapping. Um, any questions of the deputant? Is there any questions of the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, next quest, uh, deputant on the list, I'm going to go back to Big C. Lou. Yep, here. I heard him when I heard him. Sorry, I accidentally skipped over your name. You have three minutes whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. All right, so my name is Big C. Liu. Uh, I'm come here, first, uh, I would say from the customer perspective of a, a holistic yes. massage, okay. of a foot massage. Uh, and uh, also, I'm a great believer in workers' rights, in all the you know, working people, if they work, I believe they des deserve safe workplace and decent pay. So that's why I'm here today. So I remember just back uh, many, <laughs> quite a few years back, so I work uh, in a very precarious, uh, you know, jobs, and I was like, a, don't have enough uh, money. At that time, I was uh, very struggling to survive, but I, I also have uh, health needs to need, you know, massage. So I went to the neighborhood, there is uh, foot uh, reflexology. Um, the, the providers, uh, so she provided the foot re uh, massage. And uh, I, so I give them a try. Uh, so a uh, female reflexologist, so she provide, uh, you know, fit massage for me. And uh, after a couple of times, my health condition improved. I feel, you know, I sleep much better at the night. It's, uh, I think that that one's really great help me. Today I heard a lot of back and forth talk about, uh, you know, uh, you know, workers' position, some about the human traffic things. Actually, I kind of feel like uh, how those two connect, uh, you know, is the, the, I don't think there's two things against each other, but it sounds like uh, it's kind of strange for me. I just, the uh, first I heard they here. Um, so I want to, from that perspective, as a customer, as, a, as somebody used that service, I think it's needed in the community. And they have a good price, much better than uh, RMT, I, which I couldn't afford. It's a, 
So that's what uh, I want to make the point. I still have a few times. I want to address one thing, which I think is also, it's just uh, happened earlier at this uh, hearing. I found the uh, counselor, Jim Carriginius. Is that the pronounce? If I apologize if I pronounce your name correctly. I found that you have a dialogue with Ms. Anna Willits, earlier the one deputies. Uh, say, sorry, sorry you, have to, you have to address your remarks to me. Yeah, I'll just say, seems you suggest that the holistic practitioner don't pay taxes, if my understanding was right. You suggest that. It's, if, if my understanding was right, it's so irresponsible. I would say because as a city councillor, you represent the government, you hold a lot of power. If you have that position... Sorry, sir. Uh, your three minutes are up. If you could wrap up, please, and you need to address your comments to me, not members of the committee. Okay, but okay. Uh, Councillor Paul... Uh, uh, Ainsley. Ainsley. So I say just earlier, one of your committee members said that uh, I found it's very irresponsible if my understanding was right. I'm not quite sure because English is my second language. If I, my understanding was wrong and I'll take that back, but if uh, as a committee member, take that statement and say that they have shown the evidence. Otherwise, they shouldn't say that. So if my understanding was right, I really don't have confidence in a member in this committee such important and relate to so many people's uh, livelihood and to make any fairness, to wrap up, sir. Sorry. fair decision about you know, this process. Okay, right. thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any uh, questions of the okay, deputy? Question. Councilor Wong Tam? Nope. Councillor Holliday. Thank you. Are you a, a practitioner or just, you mentioned you went to a reflexologist for your feet. No, I'm not a practitioner. No, you're just, you are a customer of a reflexologist. Yes. Okay, good. So here's my question for you. Do you think, uh, as a customer, you would prefer to have the reflexologist have a license from the city or have no license? And would you prefer that the reflexologist be a member of an association, like a professional association, or unregulated? You know, I don't really have no much to say about that. I just want to, from a customer perspective, say, hey, I had a good service. It really helped me. I think we should keep that and let people have the, you know, opportunity to work, to make a living for themselves, and also help people like me who need help. Okay. So, so yeah. if you had bad service or you had something you didn't trust, who do you think should manage that problem? Uh, sorry, can you repeat If you had bad service, let's say they hurt you, what, what, who should manage the problem? Well, if, uh, I wish they have uh, some, some sort of a body where I can address this issue so to okay. file the complaint or somewhere. Okay. Uh, all right, and that would be an association or maybe the city? Yeah. Okay, thank you, that's very helpful. Thank you, Councillor. Any, quest any other questions of the deputy? Councillor Karagiannis. Uh, thank you, sir. Last time you were to this uh, clinic, when was that? Body rub or foot massage or reflexology? When was it? Sorry, can you repeat it? When was the last time you went to one of these establishments? Oh, the, the last time I used? I mean, the, the, the experience I'm just sharing with you, which is 2012. How did you pay? Cash? I paid cash. Did you get a receipt? No, I didn't. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions of the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, next, the next deputy on the list is Rupalim Bayan, the factor and with the Faculty of Social Work, University of Toronto. She had to leave? Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Gitanjali Lina, Springtide Resources and Rights of Non-Status Women Network. And my apologies if I mispronounced your name. Thank you for saying that, and thank you committee members for uh, sitting through all of our deputations, I really appreciate that. And I'm going to try not to repeat a lot of what other people have said. There's been a lot of great points made. Um, I 
Since 2007, I have been a member of the Law Society of Upper Canada, now the Law Society of Ontario, and I practiced for about eight years in criminal defense, immigration, and human rights law. And at that time, during that period, I uh, served a number of clients who were women whose human rights had been violated, but they also found themselves uh, facing deportation pr proceedings as a result of their employment or their status being criminalized. And now I work as a program manager at Springtide Resources, which is an organization that for 41 years now has been working to prevent violence against women and girls and also to uh, in, uh, tr provide training and resources uh, across the gender-based violence sector for people who work with survivors of violence. And so I come here to you to discuss the, the staff report and the proposed amendment uh, for the bylaws with regards to holistic centers and body rub parlors. And my opinions and, report, uh, and remarks today are based on my review of the Auditor General's report, the staff report, uh, a fact sheet on holistic centres in Toronto produced by Butterfly, and in discussion with a number of culturally sensitive service providers who work with uh, workers at holistic centres and body rub parlours such as the uh, Chinese and Southeast Asian Legal Clinic here in Toronto, the South Asian Legal Clinic of Ontario, Butterfly and FCJ Refugee House, um, to name a few. Many of the women that I work with at Springtide Resources experience a number of serious structural barriers to uh, employment. These are newcomer women. So it may be racism from employers, it may be language barriers, it may be immigration status requirements that they don't have, or it may be the Canadian rejection of their existing professional qualifications. And as a result, you find a high a high percentage of racialized immigrant women in working in holistic centers and body rub parlors. And at Springtide, we feel like this is a very, very important employment uh, workplace and opportunity for these women to make a living for themselves and their families, and also through which they contribute to the city's economy. In considering amending bylaws that regulate this sector or change the regulation of this sector, I emphasize that city councillors must ensure that the labour rights and safety of these workers Sorry, are considered. Sorry, please? Okay. Uh, so I want to support um, uh, better training for municipal licensing officers, meaningful consultation with the workers themselves, uh, addressing the discrimination that the workers in the holistic centers face and the body rub parlors, and considering the two licensing structures uh, in, um, in how they interact together, not necessarily as two separate uh, types of licensing. And I want to support also on behalf of Springtide the amendments brought forward by Councillor Wong Tam. Thank you very much. Uh, questions of the deputant? Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much, and through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, with respect to um, your comments about um, uh, marginalized uh, populations that don't speak English, who are newcomers. Uh, there's actually very little in the in the report mm -hmm. that speak to the cultural uh, linguistic challenges. I think there's. I saw one line. Um, is, do you believe that perhaps we 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 did not look at the the program holistically um, in a in a way that no, holistically that look at the program holistically and in all the and the and the impact of certain populations uh, above others to the exclusion of others, I should say. I think you're right. Uh, it's it's th certain demographics are disproportionately affected by the proposed amendment changes and by any kind of, of workplaces that are um, small and ha where legislation and regulation is changing and where there is some elements of isolation and the demographic group is already isolated. So yes, I do think that the city needs to consider uh, the impact of any changes in a way that looks at uh, racialized women 
But, but, it, but this report does not do that uh, in its current form yet. Is that correct? Yes. And so the impact on the businesses that are owned, um, the impact of this report is on immigrant-owned businesses. Is that correct? Yeah. And the impact of this report is on uh, mostly Asian uh, women workers. Uh, is that correct? Yes. And in your comments about putting a, a human rights approach uh, over the, the report, um, is it your opinion, because you're, you're a solicitor, you, you, you specialize in human rights law, um, that that particular component is still missing? Yes. And so any further work and, rec and for any further actions that come out of this report, uh, is it important to center the, the experience uh, and, the, and, the, uh, and the impact of the actual people who are going to be uh, affected? So they should be part of the consultation. Absolutely, and I'm affirming what many of the other deputants, especially the, the speaker from Butterfly said, it's, it's absolutely critical to hear the, the, the voices of those workers and, and in hearing them, make sure that as you're doing those consultations, you have the mechanisms that make it easy for them to, easy and safe for them to speak their truth. And just uh, with respect to um, purchases, um, all the purchase, all, all goods and services that you've actually consumed in, in the City of Toronto, do you walk off with a receipt all the time? No. When you got your hair cut, uh, were you offered a receipt from your hairdresser if you didn't ask for one? Thank you. No. Okay, thank you. Here. Thank you, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, Councillor Karagiannis, saw your hand. Questions? Excuse me. Sorry, Councillor Karagiannis has a question for you. Thank you. I understand that you're a lawyer? Yes, I am. You're a practicing lawyer? I'm not practicing at the moment. I'm a member of the Law Society of Ontario. Okay, if you were practicing law, would yeah. you be charging taxes for your services? If I was making over a certain amount of money, I would be over required 30, right? I would be required then to charge HST. Right. If not then I would not have to charge HST, so no. Over 30,000 you'll have to require to be charged. I believe that's correct. And if sorry. you didn't charge HST, sorry. Sorry. but I don't know. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm just a moment. Sorry, Councillor. Uh, you're supposed to be asking questions, clarification. Asking questions and clarification. On my deputation? Clarification of her presentation, not how she her, makes her well, income. Well, that's not the same rule that you used on my colleague there when she asked the question. So, Councillor, I'm asking you to make questions of clarification on the presentation. Sure, you Thank use you. the same rule for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do you expect that the folks that are using the services, they should be paying taxes and be charged taxes? Sorry, which, who are you talking about? The individuals that use the services, should they not be paying taxes? Who use the services of a holistic center yes. or a should body rep? Yes, should they not rep? be paying taxes? Should they not be, pay, like HST? Yes. I'm not an expert on tax law. I would think that HST would be charged, but I am not an expert on how the goods and services tax right. or harmonize that's, that's not. Thank you. That's not my specialty. Thank you, thank you very much. Good councillor. Any other questions on my deputation? No, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, and I'm just going to go back. I'm just going back into the list of deputants. Uh, Lisa Lee, I believe, is here now. Lisa Lee. I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. So I'm trying to run a meeting, Councillor. Thank you for your input. Lisa Lee? Okay. Uh, next list back where we are Jenny Duffy, Maggie's Toronto Sex Workers Action Project. I'm looking for Jenny Duffy. Sorry, I'm the interpreter. Sorry, and you are? Uh, I'm Sean Yuan. I forgot his name. His name is Sang Yuan. So I think um, he said that you forgot his name earlier. Okay. Sang Yuan. Sean Schreiner. Sean Yuan. Sean Yuan. Sean Yuan. Y U A N. Uh, okay. Well, no, no, I was no, told no. you were being replaced by Bixie Liu. Oh. 
which is who we heard from. Sorry, he's representing the Sally. Sorry, who are you representing? The Sally. I'm the interpreter. This gentleman's representing okay. the Sally. All right, I understand. Okay. All right, so you have three minutes whenever you're ready. Can you double the time because of for the interpretation? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to. It's three minutes for everyone. Uh, it's it's to, right. to, to be fair, because he needs interpretation services. He will speak for three minutes, and I will interpret for another three minutes. OK, sorry, the clerks just told me I can't extend the time. Yeah. I'm a uh, holistic licensed uh, worker. Much of time earlier was discussed about human, uh, human trafficking. Um, uh, 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 if there is like trafficking going on in most of the centers, there will be no point in canceling the license. Uh, it's required that to do background checks so that, um, so that um, the workplace is safe. Uh, you should um, really um, increase the punishment when, if you are really concerned about anti-trafficking in the entertainment, um, in the entertainment sector. Uh, there should be some sort of written uh, uh, documents just in terms of saying that people are should still be able to work even after like, the license has been canceled. There shouldn't be any other additional requirements for people to be able to work. Massage powder is really a commonplace business for, uh, for, uh, for, the, for people, just like going, just like a restaurant, just like their barber shop. Just like any other meaningful kind of work that all of you guys are doing here. There's nothing too, too high. Uh, we shouldn't be uh, influenced by any uh, people's personal perspective about this sector. Uh, this is all I need to say. I hope that um, he will question me. Really? Uh. Because he really tried to shorten uh, what he needs to say. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and through you. I just want to verify, Mr. S Mr. Yoon, uh, are, did you say that you're a licensed um, worker at a holistic center? Sure, sure. Yes. So yes. You're, you, you actually do not own the center, you actually work in the center. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he's, uh, he's a postal worker and the owner. Okay, so you so it's almost like a workers' co-op. So you work, but you also participate in the in the center's ownership. Yeah, he works there and he also owns it. 
And how many uh, of the workers uh, at the center, including, um, obviously I, I know that English is your second language, but out of the, the number of workers in the, in the center uh, where you are uh, employed, how many of them actually speak uh, fluent English? Or, or are most of them English as a second language speaker? Uh, 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 um, only one or two uh, employees who can speak English, even if they speak, they don't really speak fluently. Okay, and thank you. And so my, my final question is, throughout this consultation process uh, of engaging in the city and our process to evaluate uh, the programs and the services, um, has it been easy for you to communicate without an interpreter with our city staff or even the MLS inspectors that walk through the door? Okay. Um, he said um, it's been improved over time because of their consultation and then after they provide uh, feedback to the city employees. So that the city has gotten better at communicating with this sector. Uh, yeah. and Thank you. And, and if this very nice young woman was not with you today to act as a translator, how would you have given us your deputation? Um, I will not be able to do that. And, and are there other individuals, individual workers, and even uh, holistic center owners who may be in your same situation that if they didn't have their own translator, their own interpreter, that perhaps their voices may not have been heard today? Okay. So I, he said, usually they will find they will need to find people to help them. Okay, that you would you would provide your own translator every given time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any questions of the deputy from committee members? Oh, I welcome questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. 我还有很多话想说, 就是实际上... I, I still have all, all the things I want to say, and I thought that through questions I was able to express more. more what I want to say. So we're the ones that decide to ask the deputy questions, and we don't have any, so we respectfully ask you to step down. Thank you. Thank you. So next on the list, I have Jenny Duffy from Maggie's Toronto Sex Workers Action Project. Good afternoon, Ms. Duffy. You have three minutes whenever you're ready. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, city councillors. Thank you, city staff who have been working hard on this whole bylaw review. My name is Jenny Duffy. I'm from Maggie's Toronto Sex Workers Action Project. For those who are not familiar with Maggie's, we're the oldest sex worker-run organization in Canada. Maggie's focuses on supporting the dig dignity and safety of sex workers through harm reduction approaches and public advocacy. And I recognize that we're not here today to talk explicitly about sex work, but on behalf of Maggie's, I want to express the support and the safety of workers, no matter what kind of work they are doing. So I understand that the MLS staff, they are not making any definitive recommendations in the report right now, but they are seeking city council direction to continue exploring these recommendations. They should be permitted to do so, and this should be in done in, con in consultation with workers and with the aim to ensure labor rights, health, safety, and well-being of workers, consumer as well as worker protection, and the well-being of the City of Toronto. The workers of body rub parlors and holistic centers are the primary stakeholders, as any bylaw amendments will impact them the most. 
many workers, especially immigrants, who experience more difficulty finding employment, as we've discussed, due to language barriers, unrecognized credentials. They have every reason to be concerned about maintaining access to work and that any new regulations are going to enhance their safety and are going to make them feel respected and worthy. The well-being and the rights of these workers should be prioritized in the next steps of this review. As we've discussed, this is a very complex sector. A lot of workers don't have English as, as their first language, so consultations will need to be very careful and very deliberate and should be centered on the experiences and the voices of these workers. And as I said before, there should be a labor rights perspective that's taken. And certainly, if this bylaw review is being carried out with an anti-trafficking lens, there should be every effort then to enhance labor rights and enhance access to work. Because it's very clear that when working conditions are not safe, when people become unemployed, especially marginalized populations, they become more vulnerable to trafficking. And so I'll end this by saying that on behalf of Maggie's, I support the motion sent by um, Councillor Wong Tam. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the deputy and outside councillors? Committee? Thank you very much. Thank you. I do have a question for you, however. Um, can you tell me, please, what motion you're referring to by Councillor Tam? The one that um, Councillor Wong Tam submitted on May 17th. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dong Ming Liang, yes. Ontario Holistic Association. Yes. It's uh, part of the communication package. Okay, but they, they should make it clear. Whenever you're ready, three minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm a member of the Eli Holistic uh, uh, Association. I'm a member of the Eli Holistic Association. I'm a Holistic License Practitioner. I have been working in my community in the same location for 15 years. I rely this license to make my living. For so many years, uh, relying on my professional massage skill, I earned the reputation and respect from my customer, from my community, and uh, and I get a good feedback. So I lived my stable life in the same location, same community for 15 years. Now I heard the government is proposing to remove the license that I rely on making my living. But my age is over 50 years old. Uh, That's my only professional skill to make my living. I can't imagine after losing the license, what will my life be? If the license is removed, that will directly destroy my life. Uh, in my industry, many practitioners are at my situation. Uh, I would like to ask the government, the function of the government is to improve the life of people. Uh, if the government take away this license, that will immediately affect 
the life of 2,200 families and work. I, I'm puzzling and want to ask why the government is even proposing such a move. We do not agree Five seconds wrap up, to please. cancel the license. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from outside uh, councillors? Questions? Councillor Holliday. Thank you for speaking to us. So I understand uh, you prefer to remain as a licensed holistic practitioner. Yes. 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 Do you have a governing body that oversees the work that you do, and do you see a role for that governing body? Also, Besides the government, like an association. Like an MLS? Like an association, yes. Association or MLS? Association. Association. Do you have a government body to oversee your work or oversee your work? We are very satisfied with the license. For so many years, uh, we have been uh, supervised by the MLS, and uh, we find it uh, very cooperative and very present. Whose role is it that you feel to oversee the operations of holistic practitioners, a professional association or the bylaw enforcement? I think both have their importance. A professional association will help us and give us the training that we need to do the job. But the MLS are giving us the government supervision to ensure all the center are healthy and safe. And the last question, do you believe the professional association should eject members who are doing things that are not permitted, such as body rubbing? In my case, Thank you. I left and get violated, so I didn't know the others. But uh, I, I didn't hear, I, I never heard that such things happen, that ejecting the members in the association. Should uh, MLS cancel the license of a holistic practitioner that is performing services that they're not permitted to do, like body rubbing? Holistic center, before we, we go to cancelling the license, uh, so you think you know, the government Chair, should give more communication in the language they understand mm -hmm. and education process? In three minutes. If finally they still make the same mistake, yes, you should you know, cancel the license of that violator. Yeah. Thank Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Oh. Are there questions for the deputy? Councillor Karagiannis. Thank you for coming. Um, I was wondering if you can tell me where your establishment is. Is it in Scarborough? Is it in North York? Where is it located? Yes. Yeah, near close to Young and Eglinton. Young and Eglinton. Um, the... Um, the establishment itself. I don't think anybody talks about taking away licenses. I don't think the report talks about taking away licensing. 
So if she's talking about licensing takeaway. Where did you where did you read this? She looked at the report in the second page, in the first point. The government is proposed to remove the holistic license. Then they open the, um, the, the and increase the number of body rub establishments. All right. So she's not in favor of removing the holistic centers. Strongly opposed. Now, what organization is she with again? You mean the professional organization? Yes. She said, Oh, because it's uh, 15 years ago. So for Papa, I can find out and give the name to you. Well, what organization is she she's listed under? I believe that one no, organization or association, professional health association? Right, so is she, is she a member of a professional organization or association? Right now, she is a member of the Ontario Holistic License Practitioners Association. Okay, so the members of Holistic, the whole thing, yeah. they're not in favor of us removing Holistic Centers licenses. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, so you want the licenses to stay? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions to the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, the next deputant is Lee Jun Wang from the Ontario Holistic Association. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. You have three minutes whenever you're ready. You're interpreting, sir? Yeah, I'm interpreting. Okay, thank you. In the past, because the whole holistic industry and the petitioners, their age are relative older and their cultural backgrounds are not Canadian, that's why part of the petitioner have a communication problem with the MLS. And because of misunderstanding, some violations happen. But recently, the MLS have improved the attitude of enforcement. Making the bylaw more accessible and clear to us. And improve the way of inspection. When they discover the problem, they suggest and recommend how to correct it. They do all their diligent duties. And also, they also take into the consideration, consideration and provide Chinese translation to the petitioners. Yeah, they are using an attitude, a position of helping the petitioners to communicate. They gain the respect. They gain the respect from our industry petitioners. Because of the supervision by the MLS and also the training from the association, most of the petitioners, they try to follow the rules and regulations of the MLS. So compared to a licensed uh, situation, it's uh, much better. And they put the holistic industry on the right track, in the right direction. And also every year they have to renew their license. 
保留真迹审判的。And they keep the one that、uh, follow the regulation. 淘汰违规的。They could eliminate eliminate the violators. 保证了行内的规范。This could ensure the you know the uh the healthy development of the industry. 通过定期的督查。Because of a, a periodic inspection, from 根本上杜绝了本行列人口贩卖的可能性 Yeah, they basically eliminate the opportunity or chances of human trafficking. 综上所述 So to conclude, 我们要求在来拯救的监管下 under the supervision of the MLS, 保留牌照 to keep the license, 加强监管 And we can improve the improve enforcement. 通过以以以疏透为原则，以疏透，就是不是不才才会让本行业更。And that will make、uh, our industry will be developing on the right direction. 市场更加走向良性循环。And the and and the market will will go by a a a, a good、uh, circle circle, you know, from the customer side and the A petitioner side. We are all free to be punished. So we are all free to be punished. Ah, this is the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions of the deputant? Seeing none. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. The next deputant listed is Kay Wang of the Ontario Holistic Association. Good afternoon, everybody. 关于移除整体牌的提议。About the suggestion of removing the holistic license. 我们有以下疑虑和担忧。We have the following worries and questions. 请予以考虑。Please consider. 报告里用了大量的篇幅讨论如何改进 Body Rub 的工作。In the report, most of the coverage is about how to improve. The work of body rub industry. 只用了几句话，呃，讲到移除整体牌照。But only spend a very little coverage to cover holistic industry. 目前多伦多市有两千多人，近四百个店铺在牌照局和警察、警察、警署的规管之下从事整体治疗工作。Currently, we have 400 holistic centers and about over 2,000. Holistic practitioners working under the supervision and enforcement of the MLS and the police department. 政府是不是要考虑这些人、这些从业人员和业主下一步的工作和就业问题 ？So if the government were to do so, should the government consider the future, the next job for these practitioners? 报告里只说我们可以继续营业。In the report. It recommends we may continue to work without a license. 对行业标准如何检查、监督、管理，没有做下一步安排。But that's it. About what will be the the new standards, what will be the supervision without a license, they didn't mention at all. 这令我们感到迷惑和不安。This makes us very puzzled and worried. 在牌照局的规管下。取得牌照。呃、uh, ，we get our license through the MLS。从根本上阻止了不法分子进入这个行业的机会。Because of that screening, basically you eliminate any chances of human trafficking。如果取消牌照，失去了关关键部门的监管过滤，就业人员的身份无从辨认。Yeah, if the if the license were removed. We lose that kind of screening, okay? It will be very hard for the owners to screen. You know, the practitioner they want to hire. 业主被迫不用或者少用雇员。So, in order not to take the risk, the owners will not take the risk to hire more practitioners. 大部分从业人员将失业。And most of the practitioners will lose the job. 由于业主减少或者不敢雇佣员工 
because of the loss of the business owners, uh, they didn't want to take the risk to hire workers. Yeah, that will only push the current owners to underground or to residential areas. We cannot guarantee the safety. Harassment, crimes will occur very frequently. Uh, At the same time, a lot of uh, people without legal working status, you know, and without skills, they will come to this industry and causing greater problems for the unlicensed holistic industry. Yeah, if the government removes the license, all those bigger problems, we hope the government will consider. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions to the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much for coming in this afternoon. Thank you. Next on the list, I have Wen Chao Zhu of the Holistic Association. Good afternoon, everybody. I saw the government's holistic license permits. I saw the report from the government to propose to remove the holistic license, and the main reason is human trafficking. I strongly disagree with that. I'm a management of a holistic license uh, center. I've been in this business for 10 years. Today, I just want to express my viewpoint about human trafficking. In my 10 years of management, never one case human trafficking happened. Because every holistic license practitioner, they need to qualify for a license. To obtain this qualified license, there are following conditions. A, Number one, they need to get a police license. Background check and no criminal record. And every four years they have to resubmit that record again. Secondly, professional training and certificate. And and also, they have to go through the government's uh, permitted professional association to renew the certificate, and every year they be uh, inspected. And also, get the, finally get the license from the MLS and pay certain fee, and the MLS will check the ID. And also with the MLS, every year the license has to be renewed. And also with the MLS, every year the license has to be renewed. To make sure the applicant is legally have legally working status to work in this industry. And also when we recruit the practitioner, the first very first condition is 
they must have a qualified license. 第三，持牌人都是自雇身份。Yeah, thirdly, the petitioner they are self-employed. 第四，多年来我们始终都配合政府的管理和检查，从未出现过人口贩卖状况。Yeah, and for so many years, we always cooperate with the MLS, and never a case in my management experience, one case of human trafficking happened. 在这十年里，我也认识许许多多的同行，包括管理者和员工。For the past ten years, I also know a lot of practitioner and owners. 从来没有听说过有任何人口贩卖的情况。I never heard from them. There's one case of human trafficking happened in license holistic industry. 哪怕是一例也没有。Not even one case. 我想提出，我想向提出取消牌照的人问一问。没有了政府的审核，没有了政府的监管，我们如何辨别员工是否有合法的身份 ？So I would like to raise a question: After removing the license, will the situation become better? And after removing the situation, how can the owners screen the participants that want to come in to work? 是否有合法的工作权利 ？Are they do they have legally working status? 是否有合格的专业技能 ？Do they have professional skills？ 是否会催生人口贩卖的可能 ？So this could make the human trafficking issue much bigger without a license。以贩卖人口为理由取消牌照，在逻辑上是不正确的。So based on the reason of human trafficking, this very reason to remove the holistic license system. Is not logical. 恰恰是没有了牌照，才会催生人口贩卖的出现。Exactly opposite. Okay. Without a license system, the cases of human trafficking or the risk of human trafficking will increase. 另外，我也想问，如果在 holistic 行业里有人口贩卖的案件的话，有多少件？ And I'm being objective. I would like to ask the government to provide the actual statistic and figures of human trafficking happen in licensed holistic industry. 比例是多大 ？What is the ratio? What is the percentage? 为什么在报没有在报告里出现有效的数据呢 ？Why the report did not mention any effective figures and percentage? 我很费解。I could not understand. Sorry, sir. I need you to wrap up. Yes. Oh, we're finished. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Questions of the deputy from outside councillors? No. Committee members? Seeing none. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next on the list, I have Lee Zhang from the Holistic Association. Lee Zhang. Good afternoon, everybody. 针对报告中已移除整体牌。According to the report that proposed to remove the holistic license, 我代表 holistic 持牌人。I represent the holistic license practitioner. 坚决反对。As an owner, I strongly oppose that. 关于 holistic 行业违规操作。About some violations in the holistic industry. The report point out in holistic industry. Some licensed practitioner they violate the regulation. And they provide they perform some unauthorized industry. Uh, uh, surface, I'm sorry, unauthorized surface. Body rub, like the body rub industry. Yes. And I would like to ask the government a question. If you remove the license of the holistic, if you remove the license of the holistic, will these problems go away? The answer is not. 
任何一个行业都会有极少数人违规。Any industry, there must be some violators. 只有加强监管才会避免。Only to improve the enforcement can improve this situation. 为什么要粗暴的取消呢？ Why the government has to do a, such a sudden decision to remove it? Because, because the Chinese industry is the majority. Is it because in this industry most of the practitioners are Asian? Or ethnic diversity? This will lead us, lead us to think there are some factors of the, uh, racial discrimination. According to reliable evidence. According to reliable figures, Bangladesh industry from the practice of racial discrimination. The violations in the body rub industry is much more serious than licensed holistic industry. Yao bi wo men yan zhong de duo. Government for the body rub, welcoming da du. In this report, in this report, we could see the. Government is much more lenient to the body rub license industry. 对 holiday 牌照严厉取消。But much harsh, much harder to the holiday license industry. 请问政府的依据是什么标准 ？So we would like what kind of standard is the government based on? 这是严重的行业歧视吗 ？I think this is a very serious. Discrimination in two different industries. We strongly oppose that. 关于 holiday 行业牌照问题 About holiday license issues. 请问哪个行业没有问题 We would like to ask: Is any industry do not have violation or issues? 有问题就要取消牌照吗 Or if There is violations. The only way to do is to cancel the license. Why does not the body rub license? So why does not the government cancel the more serious violations of the body rub industry? Driving. When you drive, you have violations. Driver license of violations. Why does not the government cancel the driver license? Can the government cancel the driver license system? Restaurant will have violations. Food restaurant has violations. Can the license be removed? Now, the business is working well. Currently, our industry is on the right track. We get a lot of regulations from the public. But the government has been a little bit worried. And the government, because of certain, you know, violations and problems, has to cancel the license. Now, the business is working well. Currently, our industry is on the right track. We get a lot of regulations from the public. And the government, because of certain, you know, violations and problems, has to cancel the license. 是不是对本行业有失公平 ？I don't think this is fair to the industry. 市场需要 holiday 牌照。It based on demand and supply. The market has the need for holiday license petitions. 一九九八年十月三十日。Since October 30, 1998. 市议会颁发。整体从业人员牌照分类。City Council. You know, implemented the license system. It's over 20 years. Holistic center. Holistic center. Has developed to 400 centers. And also have over 2,000 practitioners. It means that this industry is huge. Over 2,000 practitioners. It means that this industry is huge. Over 2,000 practitioners. It means that this industry is huge. Over 2,000 practitioners. It means that this industry is huge. Over 2,000 practitioners. Any industry that can be running for developing for twenty years, 就表示该行业是健康的。It only shows there's a need for that industry. 有益于社会。Contributing to the society. 现在政府突然要。Wrap up, please. It's six minutes. Finish. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of the deputy from visiting councillors? Thank you. Seeing none. Committee. Seeing none. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next deputy is Lu Ying from the Holistic Association. Uh, 
Chill, chill. Ah. Go away, Xia Wu Hao. Good afternoon, everybody. What she mean, Honey City gets on yet? Yeah, I'm a holistic practitioner. Fan Di Chi Xiao Pai Zhao. I oppose the removal of the holistic license. Can Bao Gong Yu Shuo Yachi Xiao Wu Men Honey City Pai Zhao? The report it said that it proposed to remove our holistic license. And recommend to uh, work in the body rob license. And we just feel that this is not fair and not responsible. Holistic needs skill and training. It's a complement to RMT in the market. It do not have limitation of age and sex. Because they have flexible working hours. A lot of single mother they chose this job. Because they they don't have they have no language requirement. A lot of the middle-aged to elderly age women, they chose this job. We work hard. We are decent people. We don't rely or taking benefits from the government resources. So we bring a healthy and steady income to support our family. Yeah, to mix up holistic industry and the body rock industry. Yeah, this is not the right uh, knowledge of uh, knowing about these two industries. This is two different industries. They cannot be compared. The report used over 85% coverage to describe how to improve body rub industry. Only 15% of the coverage talking about holistic and about how to remove the holistic license. We feel this is a discrimination to the industry. Yeah, it's not very responsible to the petitioner and also the customers. Removing the license will make a lot of people losing their job like me. We definitely will not go to their places to work where there is unlicensed. Because unlicensed place have greater risk and uh, is, uh, have more factors for risking uh, my, uh, my, my life. Okay. That's why we oppose the cancellation of the license. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. Questions to the deputy and from outside councillors? Bringing into the committee, committee members, questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, the next deputy is uh, Kate Armstrong from the Bon Thai Spa. Good afternoon, Ms. Armstrong. You have three minutes whenever you're ready. Good afternoon. Thank you for letting me present here. I'm the owner of Bon Thai Spa, which is a uh, spa and school dedicated to the art of Thai massage, uh, which is a bit of a niche. Uh, there are 29 associations, only four that actually cover the art of traditional Thai massage. Uh, as a spa owner, I would, uh, I do not want to use, uh, lose the license. For me, it speaks to the integrity and accountability of my practice. Um, as a further layer, we insist that all of our practitioners carry their own insurance as well as our insurance for their scope of practice, something the city might consider doing 
as being mandatory for license holders, to give that layer of credibility. Uh, I would also have no problem as an owner taking more responsibility, whatever that entails, to help keep that license in place. Tourists come to Toronto, and I feel that it's a, when they walk into an establishment that's licensed, it's a sign that the City of Toronto cares about tourism. To take that away is going to open up a whole new can of worms. Aside from the obvious standards of hygiene that are maintained, if you take the license away, you take that integrity away, that accountability away. My practitioners feel the same way about their licenses and feel a level of protection. We specialize in Thai massage, which unfortunately has the connotation of a happy ending. It is not. It is a monk's practice. The reason it has that connotation is the U.S. soldiers after World War II going into Asia, throwing their dollars around and basically creating an industry. We get calls almost daily from people asking for a happy ending. You take our license away, you take our credibility away, it's going to be difficult for us to keep those people away. You would be also doing a serious injustice to the Thai community, the very large Thai community in Toronto, by allowing a massage of any kind to be associated with sex. If you take our license away, what is to stop anyone deciding they don't want to pay the body rub, uh, rub license fee from hang What's to stop anyone from hanging up a shingle and saying massage when in fact they're offering other services? If you think human trafficking is bad now, just you wait. How will the city know who is doing what if there is no longer a requirement for inspections? If you let this genie out of the bottle, you will never put it back. In closing, I want to say I've had no problem with the licensing inspections themselves. They have always been incredibly polite and respectful. But I am learning more and more through all of these meetings that it is because I am white and speak English. That doesn't reflect well on the city. In closing, I would have no problem taking more responsibility for my staff in order to keep my license and their licenses in place. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from outside councillors? No. Back into committee, committee members? Seeing none? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that was the last deputant on the list. Uh, so questions of staff from outside councillors? Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much, um, and through you to staff. With respect to the, uh, the recommendations before us, uh, what you're asking uh, this committee to do is to just allow you to uh, go back and do further um, uh, review before you develop a policy uh, that is brought forward by council. So really today is not a decision-making day about the bylaw, because that's not what's before us. Is that correct? That's correct, Councillor. What we're looking for is guidance from you and your colleagues to put, set us on the path of what we should be looking at as we uh, move forward with this. And would you have any objection to ensuring that when you draft this report uh, that you can do so in uh, discussion with relevant stakeholders to put a, uh, a lens around labour, um, not necessarily labour practices in a big P sense under the province, but in, ter in terms of workplace safety, uh, centering the experience of the workers. You have no objections to that, is that correct? That's correct. And uh, with respect to um, the, uh, the comments and the, uh, the references that were made today um, around human trafficking, uh, in your experience uh, and through the municipal standards officers going in to speak with practitioners, holistic uh, uh, centre owners, um, how, how rampant is human trafficking in this sector? We do not have um, uh, good or specific data on human trafficking in these. We are aware that it, it, it uh, has happened based on discussions that we've had with survivors. Um, uh, we are aware it's happening in a number of other industries, but um, we nor the police have uh, strong data uh, on this, but we, we, know it's, we know it's happening. And with respect to um, uh, the number of uh, people that you've spoken through the, through the broad consultation, has there been any uh, individual who's currently practicing that has uh, stood before you uh, either privately or in public consultation that has said, I'm a victim of human trafficking? Yes. 
There's been one? Two, okay, thank you. And when, when that took place, did you uh, report this uh, to the proper authorities and are they now actively investigating? Yes, um, when we become aware of this, we refer to the Toronto Police Service. Okay. Um, in, in domestic human trafficking in Canada, 25% uh, of the uh, individuals are generally children, and the majority of the, the adult women are Indigenous. Uh, we didn't hear from any one of those communities today, um, did we? Um, that's going to be in the SDFA report that's before ECDC next week. Okay. But, uh, but that's specifically the, the larger, broader population that, that does fall victim to human trafficking. So, so through you, Mr. Chair, I think that's a uh, question that ought to be raised when the report dealing with human trafficking writ large comes forward, as authored uh, by SDFA along with us. This report today is dealing specifically with licensing under Chapter 545. Excellent. And so. The, the fact that there, that there are two different reports dealing with two separate matters uh, coming to City Council, uh, there was an opportunity to bring them together, uh, but they're actually sitting separately. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. We've been working with SDFNA uh, for a number of months on this. It has been designed in such that they do come together so we can have this discussion at uh, one council meeting with both items. Okay, excellent. And uh, with respect to the SDFA report, I recognize it's not necessarily before us today, um, but the, one of the reasons I, why the human trafficking lens wasn't necessarily placed over this report is because you're seeing it as an entirely separate issue uh, from uh, the licensing of these businesses. Is that correct? Um, the anti-human -tra anti trafficking lens was developed by SDFA in and it was part of the considerations uh, in the development of MLS's report, um, but it, um, the, the work of the SDFA report is focused on access to, to city services uh, more than uh, directly related to the licensing regimes. Thank you. So MLS is just one of many divisions work that is considered in the human trafficking report and an opportunity for the city to support survivors of human trafficking. And, and, and then finally, uh, my, my last question is that by way of um, uh, adopting uh, these set of recommendations and possibly some minor amendments to ensure that there's a, a workplace safety lens, the protection of the worker as well as protection from, uh, of the consumer of service. Um, really at, 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 the, at the core of it is really trying to, to create a fair and inclusive system uh, that re responds to the needs of, uh, of those who are just trying to make an, an honest uh, living. Uh, is that correct? In addition to, uh, go ahead, you, looks like you're ready to answer. Yes, we are trying to create a system that, that makes sense for the industry. And your, your intention with these recommendations is not to put uh, 400 businesses that are primarily uh, immigrant-owned businesses uh, out on the streets, nor is your intention to displace uh, 2,300 workers uh, who are licensed practitioners. Uh, that is not the intention of your report. Is that correct? Sorry, last question, Councillor. So, no, it is not meant to displace. What we are drawing to your attention here is that unauthorized services are being provided in a number of these, and a high majority of them. Uh, we want to bring that to your attention and we determine whether we need to be in this business or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, bringing in the committee, questions of staff from committee members? Councillor Holliday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I. Um, there's a lot in this report. Um, there's a lot in the appendices. There's a lot of pieces of public policy. I think there's pieces in there that are, um, and this is a question, I promise. There are pieces that are um, less contentious than others, uh, but perhaps the one that many of the committee members circled was the notion of removing the cap of 25 uh, body rub parlors. And I wondered if staff could elaborate on the linkage between the concept of removing the cap and the concept of no longer licensing holistic centers and whether or not the two were interrelated or if they were exclusive ideas. Yes, so they are interrelated. Um, again, as I said in my previous responses, a number of unauthorized services are happening in the holistic uh, centers by holistic practitioners. 
services that are more akin to body rub parlors. Um, so we have created a licensing category that the services being provided in that category are not what they were intended to do. Again, they are more akin to a BRP. And so the suggestion here is to potentially, and council has asked us to do this, to look at the potential of raising the cap and have these services provided in um, industrial zones, employment zones, um, and not in neighborhoods. Would it be uh, fair to say, at least based on the feedback and the reports and the anecdotals and any information that you've got from enforcement, that among, the, and, and what we know from the Auditor General, that you know, uh, among the holistic practitioners, a significant portion of those are providing unauthorized services, which falls into the category of body rub. And so the concept here is that the cap would be lifted and the hope would be that the, those people that are working in that field, in that practice, would then go under the license regime of the body rub. Conceptually, that is uh, one path, and, but the people who are uh, potentially in the holistic um, area, um, the, the license um, does not permit them from working or not. Right, and the, the recommendation would be with if I read it correctly, if, if what's left after the shift from one category to the other are the holistic providers, the recommendation is, is to no longer need to license them. That's correct. There are a number of businesses that we do not license. So would it be fair to say that if committee um, took a path or made a decision that there was not a desire to lift the caps of 25 on body rub parlors, that it would be a moot point or not really effective to stop licensing holistic providers. Like the two bodies are tied to each other, the two groups are tied to each other, either you go one way or the other. Is that a fair assertion? So the, the concept that's put forward and why we're, we've come here today is to get your guidance on which path to go. Right. Um, the, Conceptual path is that the holistic center practitioner could move into the body rub parlor space as the services are, again, more akin to what's being provided in a body rub parlor. Right, and path number right. two. Last question, Councillor. Okay, I'll be really quick. Path number two would be um, if council was not comfortable or, or the committee members were not comfortable with changing the quantity of body rub parlors that are called body rub parlors, then uh, there would be no sense in, in stopping to license holistic centers. In other words, you'd keep the existing license regime and whatever we change, we change, but it's either one path or the other. So again, we're looking for guidance from you on which path to go. Um, we don't commit to either. We put them out as concepts and um, we're really looking for your guidance and based on the guiding principles noted in, in, in uh, recommendation number one, on, on where we go with this industry. Thank you. Other questions of staff? Councillor Fillion. Um, thank you. So if one is of the view that um, we should not be increasing the cap on body rub parlors um, and is also of the view that we should not be continuing a system we have whereby there are we have both legitimate um, holistic practitioners and um, what are in effect body rub parlor practitioners in this same category um, and we need to change that to um, because it's we can't have unenforceable bylaws where do we go with that uh, that's the challenge with this entire industry. It's a very complex file. Um, we created a category that we thought was the right category at the time. We have since learned that it, uh, it is not. It's being misused. And um, as you can understand why we're having such a challenge with this file. But so if we acknowledge that we made a mistake, and I was one of the ones who made it back in 2005, um, how do we correct that mistake? Like it's, am I hearing that it's basically unfixable? We have to stick with that system because we created it and we don't know what else to do, even though it doesn't work? 
Yeah, what we will try to do over the next six months is find the correct category. Um, we've suggested that one of the paths is, and the correct category is body rub parlor. Is there another category out there? Um, it's a body of work that we need to undertake. No, but I mean, can we, I'm sure staff have given some thought onto, into can we undo the mistake we made in 2005 and, and allow the legitimate holistic practitioners to carry on, um, you know, um, freed up from this, um, you know, confusion about which, what they really are. Um, how, do we, how do we do that? And if you were leaving the ones who aren't holistic practitioners to fend for themselves, if one was to have that approach, what would it look like? So it's unfortunate that the legitimate uh, holistic practitioners have been um, bundled in with um, uh, service, uh, companies or, or practitioners that are providing unauthorized services. Um, a, again, a business license or a piece of paper um, is not necessarily, may not be necessary for the legitimate holistic practitioners to continue, nor for the, um, the other group. Right, so, so um, what I'm kind of hearing is we're kind of stuck with this system because we don't know how to fix it. Like surely there's been some, I think we realized it wasn't working very soon after we brought it in, so um, not you in particular, but um, all of us have had, you know, a lot of years to know this isn't working and to try to come up with a way to fix it. Have we not made any progress there? So through you, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll step in. Certainly uh, since January 30 of 2012, when I joined the city in the role of ED of MLS, this is a file that we've been trying to uh, address. There are, as you've heard through the deputants, varying positions on the state of the industry, uh, the importance of it to some people, and the challenges others have had being exploited through it. Uh, what we do know we have are two particular articles of Chapter 545 that license two separate types of businesses, both of which are woefully, uh, uh, well, unenforceable in, in many instances, quite enforceable in others, but nevertheless uh, outdated considerably. The Body Rub Parlor article was done in 1978. That's when the cap was placed. It has not been dealt with since. The Holistics License was created in 1998. And looking at uh, the minutes from that council meeting, talking about it is also a tool to help us address uh, the, the issue of properties or premises uh, providing massage services uh, to suggest that we are in a place where we are now where we have approximately 400 locations that are, we believe are actually operating as body rub parlors but are not licensed as such, therefore not regulated as such, therefore not affording us the regulation and the tools uh, to deal with the health and safety. Sure, no, I, I've got that, but yeah. my sense is that the committee does not want to increase the cap. You know, we'll find out if that's the case, but I'm sensing we don't want to increase the cap. Where does that leave us with the current mess we have? Absolutely. So through you, Mr. Chair, in the absence of raising the cap, we will continue to operate in the same, same circumstances we are now, where we have north of 300 and some odd practitioners who ought to be licensed as body rub parlors uh, actually are using the holistics license, which was not its intention, and we will be exactly where we are today. Uh, the recommendation, and I will note Councillor Wong Tam did point out that the report in front of you today is not that you're having to make the decision, it's to give additional guidance on how we're going to report back. In this particular case, when you look at the, the number of deputants that came forward and said, and I think 2,200 people or 2,200 families were referenced as some people work in this industry under their own choice or because that was the only uh, employment available to them. So our belief was that by lifting the cap or removing that, we provide an opportunity for those who wish to work in this industry to be able to do so under a proper regulation. At the same time, when you listen to other deputants who have been exploited in this industry, providing us with the opportunities and points of intervention where we've at least got a regulated regime that gives us an opportunity to have those, those interactions with people and providing services and hopefully safe haven at some point. So, you know, I, 
I'm taking a lot of time, but I will say this is an extremely complex, extremely emotional file for many people. <clears throat> the fact is we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have two bylaws that are not serving the public, the communities that are, are not pleased that holistic practitioners are operating as body rep parlors in their neighborhoods. We have people who are underserved by the regulation itself. And this is not an easy one answer. I cannot, none of us can give you a guarantee that if we make these amendments, we will have magically fixed whatever issue people believe it is we have, depending on their perspective, there are many. Uh, but what we will do is continue in the path that we are now with ineffective regulation, less than ideal uh, circumstances for people who are working in the industry and not addressing the interests of the communities. So sorry, it couldn't make it any easier. Okay, and that's the end of your five minutes, Councillor. Sorry, that's totally my fault. We can do another round if the committee so chooses. Uh, Councillor Karajanis, questions of staff. Thank you. Um, we have how many holistic um, uh, establishments? What's the number? Uh, 389. And we have 25 body rock parlors. That's correct. The body rock parlors are designated in the industrial areas? Uh, I believe it's employment zones. Employment zones. That's Through you, Mr. Chair. The existing 25 have been grandfathered, so they are not all located in employment <coughs> zones necessarily. But uh, the executive director of MLS is correct that there is now since 2013 a zoning definition for body rub parlor and permissions only in the employment zones. I just They're not that. right next to um, residential areas. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, there are some. So the, so of the 25, some that are grandfathered uh, are in close proximity to residential neighborhoods. The, the holistic body rub, um, uh, they are located in strip plazas right next to uh, residential areas, would that be correct? Yes. Um, in, in keeping with the, the spirit that we had back in 78, wouldn't it be appropriate for us to take a look and, and if we were to lift the cap or talk about lifting the cap to also include them away from residential zones, away from school zones, away from strip malls that have um, educational institutions in the strip malls? Uh, that's more of a zoning question. I'll defer to my colleague, uh, Michael Mitzi, the Director of uh, Zoning. Through you, Mr. Chair, a wellness center, a holistic center right now, is permitted in all commercial zones, commercial and uh, CR zones. And by basis of its definition, it's a, it's a sort of standard service use. That's very different from a definitional purpose uh, compared to a body rub service where it is only actually permitted in one of the four employment zones. And uh, that employment, that definition has a separation distance on it. We don't have that in the commercial residential zone. Right. But I mean, we heard today clearly that some of the holistic are also offering other services that they shouldn't be. It wouldn't be something that we take into consideration where when we move to the next step. You, Mr. Chair, I wouldn't recommend that we put setback or separation distances on certain defined terms because people are not using that use in the way it was intended. That's, that's not the reason for a separation distance. But if we were to, uh, to acknowledge that this is what there actually is done, and originally we did not allow them to be in uh, to areas where there was they were residential areas <laughs> wouldn't we use the same yardstick if we were to move forward and say okay we want to raise the cap from 25 up to 100 wouldn't we use this have to use the same yardstick and say you got to be mo moving away from residential areas so through you mr chair if businesses come in for a license as a body or a parlor then they are subject to the zoning provisions as specified as a body rub parlor. The current zoning does not differentiate holistics. Okay. So if I'm a holistic uh, practitioner right now and we lift that cap up and I'm coming in to say, look, I got a holistic and I want to uh, turn it into a body rub, will you be forcing the establishment to move? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, yes. The, a body rub parlor, if the holistic location is in an area that is not permitted for a body rub parlor, meaning it's not in an employment zone, 
then the practitioner would not be able to maintain their location at that at that place. So, if I a new application for a new license and subject. All right, let, let's make that perfectly clear then. So, if we raise the cap from 25, let's say, to 100 or 200, and 175 of them come in and say, "I want to apply to be a body rob partner," <coughs> they will have to dislocate from where they are and relocate into an area which is allowable. Would I be correct? If you go that route, you would be correct. Have we consulted with BIAs uh, on, on this uh, business? Is there, I mean, have we reached out to BIAs? We reached out to all 80-plus uh, BIAs at the start of our consultations. Uh, no one took us up on uh, the offer. What's the, um, what is the feedback? I mean, we heard a, a, a deputy say that back a couple of months back, we, we talked about going to the RCMP, uh, police, ceases, whatever. What steps have we done and what knowledge did we get back? You might want to go in a closed meeting, I'm not sure. You might want to have a report that's um, uh, confidential. But what have we heard back from them? What have we heard back from them from trafficking? What have we heard back from them from, uh, from people not paying their taxes? What do we have heard back from them on gang-related activities, uh, triads, uh, whatever you want to call it? Do we have that intelligence right now or are we just going down a path that, well, okay, Let's the blind leading the blind. Last question, Councillor. Uh, through, the, through the chair, uh, Councillor, we have consulted with the Toronto Police, specifically the um, human rights, human rights, sorry, human uh, trafficking uh, uh, team. It's anecdotal information. They haven't given us actual statistics. They've told us anecdotally that of the victims that they deal with, um, a vast uh, majority of them have had a connection to a massage parlor, um, but not necessarily being employed, and they're now. There, again, antidotal evidence is that um, some of these um, body art parlors and, and holistic centers that are offering um, unauthorized services are considered a, a, um, a grounds to kind of groom someone for uh, human trafficking. You want a second? Can have a second yeah, I don't know. Councillor Mallow, do you have questions of staff? None? No? Okay. <coughs> Councillor Kerry Jens, you're asking for a second round? I, I am. Committee okay. Okay. Just a couple of questions. Have we, um, most of the locations that you've visited, the holistic, uh, holistic uh, rub parlors, do they advertise what if they accept credit cards or is it strictly a cash business? What have your bylaw officers uh, um, seen? I think uh, through the chair, um, the safe to say that ma the majority of that industry is a cash business. Um, depending on the location, there certainly might be the availability of, of credit card um, or debit. Um, again, it's on the, uh, the preference of the customer, and a lot of times the customer does not want to use their credit card or debit card. Have you reached out to um, CRA to see if they, um, th these locations are actually paying tax? Uh, no, we have not. Would that be an initiative that would you like to take and consult with them? I mean, you do it on, on rooming houses and everything else. I'm just wondering if you can take that, that route. Um, the CRA and the filing of taxes is really the onus of the, the business proprietor and not necessarily the business of MLS. We do, um, we do require taxi cab owners to, have, to show us that they have a, a CRA number. I don't believe that's accurate. Okay. All right. Thank you. Councillor Holliday. Okay, questions are all done. Councillor Karajanis, you're done? Yes, thank you. Okay, speakers, Councillor Holliday. Oh, sorry, Councillor Wong Tam, did you wish to speak? Uh, yes, thank you very much. And I want to thank the deputants, uh, every single one of you, for coming out to speak today. 
Um, I recognize that uh, it's certainly not necessarily uh, easy to, be f to appear before committee, but I think you did all exceptionally well and you made your point. Um, I want to thank uh, our staff, uh, to be quite honest. You folks have uh, did an incredible volume of work. I know that it's, uh, it's, it's a tough file that's been said multiple times. It's a complicated file, but I think for also uh, a good number of reasons, it's also a very emotional file. And I just want to say I thank you for bringing the dignity to the work and the integrity to the work. Um, and I recognize that what you're asking us, uh, asking the committee for today is just some further direction so you can finish the, the job. Um, this is a this is an issue that I, I have to admit I, I wasn't I didn't come to it naturally it's not something I paid attention to but as I kept hearing the stories of uh, of, of workers uh, as well as advocates uh, especially around the holistic center I have less experience with the body rub um, is that they they really were feeling like they were caught uh, they were caught in a licensing regime that uh, that uh, that they said uh, was uh, was coming down pretty hard and heavy on the work that they were doing. They felt that there was some racial profiling. They felt that they were being discriminated against and that they were uh, put through undue hardship. But I do think that MLS staff have actually risen to the occasion and have responded to those, uh, to those uh, statements. And, uh, and from what I can see, their relationship has dramatically uh, improved. And I want to just say thank you because it's, it's one thing to be defensive and put your back against the wall and say, not me. It's another, it's another to say, you know what, we hear you, we see you, and we're going to do better. Um, and that has resulted in a, in a relationship that I see uh, moving forward that could be based on trust. I recognize that not everybody is satisfied with the recommendations today. Um, and certainly the recommendations today is really about taking one extra step forward. And that extra step moving forward uh, to getting to bylaw um, uh, draft and regulations um, should, <coughs> should be informed with uh, participants and the workers' direct lived experience, which is why I think it's absolutely critical that we put a workplace safety lens uh, over the, the criteria that's going to come back to council at some point in, in time. So that we protect the consumer, we protect the worker, um, and we do so in consultation with them. The, 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 the body rub issue, uh, the Bob body rub parlor um, is, is, a, is a regulation that was set back in 1975. Lots of things have changed since 1975. And the fact that we cannot have an adult conversation with a, with a level of maturity around legitimate sex work uh, is really troubling because if we don't get to that place, we're going to have a real difficult time wrangling this bylaw to some conclusion that makes sense for everyone. So moving forward, there has to be, there has to be a mature conversation around legitimate sex work and, and ensuring that we destigmatize the work. Because if we are talking about protecting workers, we have to be able to talk about protecting the workers in, in all the work that they provide. We heard today from a number of part, uh, practitioners of holistic services that said, we're not being trafficked. We're actually in control of our agency. We pick up the work that, that we want and we do what we, we, we choose and we have choice. And we heard from them in English, we heard from them in Mandarin, we heard from, from them through translators. But the message from every single worker who, be, who appeared before us today was I think the same message is that for those who are, who are interested in staying in that, in that uh, sector, um, they don't believe that they should be wrapped up in, um, in the body rub parlor. But at the same time, what we've heard from staff is that there are some services that are being offered in holistic centers that really belong in body rub parlors. But if we don't lift the cap and we don't update the bylaw to protect those workers uh, from the specific things that those advocates who speak around human trafficking are concerned about, then we're doing everyone a disservice. And one of the things that has to change about the body rub parlor, I'm sorry, my microphone, one of the things that has to change, I'm just going to shift over. One of the things that has to change about the body rub parlor um, is that managers have to be licensed. They have to now, they, they will be under the new regime, undergo uh, criminal checks. Uh, currently that's not happening. Uh, you have to remove uh, the requirement that those workers who are licensed to, the workers who are um, 
tied and confined uh, to one body rub parlor should be lifted so that they can work for whoever they want and have the mobility and range that they need. Um, and that means that we need to provide additional support for those actual workers. But we're not going to be able to get to protecting the individuals that everyone says that we need to protect who may be a victim of human trafficking if we don't actually get to the regulatory licensing uh, challenges and update them. So my recommendation to this committee, and I recognize how difficult the, the matter is, my recommendation is that let us empower the staff to do the work that they need to do. Uh, Councillor Mallow has a series of recommendations that have been placed before you by way of communication uh, on the official record. It actually just says this. Um, do additional consultation with the relevant stakeholder. Make sure you put a holistic uh, lens over it that includes putting a, a public health uh, profile over the work. Uh, ensure that we protect the consumer as well as the worker, and then make sure that the workplace safety criteria are all intact. And, and then we let the staff do that body of work, and then come back to us with the recommendations that they have after that is done. Sorry, and, Councillor, can you wrap thank up? Thank you. Um, no, that's pretty much it. But I just want to say thank you because I know that this has been so difficult and emotional for everybody. Um, and I just want to just hold some space and recognize that this is also very important work. And I am very confident that staff will get us there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we're going bring, to bring it back into committee now. I have Councillor Holliday first. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to place a motion. I may request that that be put on the screen. It's lengthy, but I think I can paraphrase it uh, fairly uh, quickly. The first is to refer the item back to the executive director requesting a report back as the original recommendations say uh, in the fourth quarter of 2019. The key here is number one, which says that it, we would maintain the existing licensing system for body rub parlors and holistic centers subject to the amendments as necessary to update the applicable bylaws. And then, of course, to go and update the Body Rub Parlor and Holistic Center bylaws consistent with the findings of the Auditor General and with consideration of, and there's a number of principles. The first is the principles that were taken as amended um, or, or, and have been circulated. Um, I'll leave that for you to read, but basically the, the safety um, of the workers and the consumers uh, and the well-being of Toronto. Um, Definitely consultation with human trafficking survivors, advocates, holistic centers and practitioners. Um, also looking at specific uh, regulations around safety for workers in the body rub parlors and we know that that's detailed in the report. Um, strengthening professional holistic association oversight and there was a lot about that in the Auditor General's report. Clarifying or increasing um, this committee's role in monitoring the licensing system and looking at what the outcomes are of the adjudications when uh, licenses are suspended or appealed and it's basically asking the staff a question about what our involvement could be going forward. Um, consulting with law enforcement and uh, MCSS's Ontario Anti-Human Trafficking Office. Um, having a look at the medical requirements uh, and modernizing them with the key operative of increasing access for health care for the workers. And the last is uh, to look at the feasibility of requesting legislation that would allow property forfeiture similar to that which is allowed under cannabis legislation. And so I'll make a couple of brief comments and the first will be, I know there's a lot under number two uh, to look at and I'm happy to take any suggestions for friendly amendments of additional things. I did my best to capture what I could see at committee but there was a lot going on today. But essentially, uh, I think the staff answered it very well in the questions. There are two paths before us as a committee. Um, there is the, let's take what we've got today, the, the, the existing regime, and adjust it, try to tinker with it, try to improve it um, without radically changing it. And that's the motion before you. And path B, which is in the staff report, is a much larger view. And the key is, is the lifting of the cap in the other path to increase the number of uh, body rub parlors. And that really is the public policy question. And all the work comes out of those one of those two concepts. And I think today this committee should give the staff direction on what they need to work on over the next number of months. It won't do a lot of good if we send them forward and say, yeah, look at taking the cap off and then we 
vote that down as council later on because all of the work that would have gone into that would be for naught. Um, I tried to articulate it in the questions. There is a, a linkage between the idea of taking the cap off the body rub parlors and no longer licensing holistics. But you can't do one without the other. So um, again, back to this motion right here, this is giving the staff some, some certainty here that we're not <coughs> looking at dismantling the licensing of uh, holistic centers. We're looking at strengthening those, those bylaws and we're not looking at taking the cap off body rub parlors. And that's really what this motion says. Um, with that, if there's any questions about it, um, any suggestions for amendments, I'm happy to take them. Thank you. Questions of the mover? Sorry. No questions of the mover? Okay, Councillor Matlow to speak. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, members, um, I have a motion uh, that, uh, that also refers the item to staff along with um, Amendments that are partially framed by Councillor Wong Tam's correspondence to us, um, working with uh, members of the community who brought uh, concerns to her attention, along with additional requests of mine, working with uh, members of the community that brought concerns to my attention, uh, and with staff to make sure that, well, we're trying to fix something that we don't intentionally, unintentionally break something. Um, what this does is that it adds in, um, I guess, an active listening component to members of the community who want to ensure that um, the general safety, workplace safety, human rights are all protected, that the workers, not just the consumers, are the focus of our concerns and our attention, um, that human trafficking is a focus of um, staff's work moving forward. And um, to also, uh, as Councillor Holliday uh, stated, um, uh, remove the, uh, the recommendation uh, that, uh, that the caps be uh, removed as part of one of the principles. The reason I do that is because I'm not convinced that that is the, uh, the avenue to take. That being said though, um, where I'm coming from is that I'm, I wanna be less prescriptive than Councillor Holliday. And Unlike, and with, I say this with all due respect, unlike Councillor Holliday's motion, I advanced circulated it to you and I worked with both members of the community and industry uh, and, uh, and staff to make sure that we arrived at a place that, um, that could actually maybe get us somewhere rather than remaining with the status quo, which is not working. The status quo is not working. What we, what we absolutely need to do is rather than tell staff, go ahead and either remove the cap or not remove the cap, is be less prescriptive today, let them work towards Q4, bring back a report, we debate it then. I also think it's critical to understand that there are people here and outside of this room who have not felt that they've been heard. Um, I've heard comments like they felt like there was already this kind of pre, uh, pre-devised destination that the city wanted to get to and that they their voices weren't part of it and that they weren't heard and you know like Councillor Wong Tam said earlier um, I initially like I, I didn't want anything to do with this I it was never an issue that that I, I, I especially was um, interested in nor was it a big issue that I heard about in my community and as all of you know I was put on onto this committee under duress by the mayor's office and it was kind of, as, as was John. And, and so it just wasn't a focus of my attention. Mm -hmm. And as I tried to uh, per per perhaps be intentionally obtuse, um, I started hearing from people, including uh, Cassandra Diamond, um, who, wa who were persistent and would not allow me to not look at this. But in fact, um, once I heard from them, I understood that we have a responsibility to to address this, not just because of the, li the, the broken licensing regime, but because we have predominantly uh, women and girls who are being victims of sexual violence in a lot of these places. And as a counselor and as a father of a six-year-old daughter, I can't, um, I can't accept that. And I think that our focus has to be wholly uh, and entirely on their well-being. 
and their safety um, and their liberty. So um, I also, by the way, want to concur with some of the comments that I heard. I mean, if there are ways that we can reach some of these workers individually rather than the operators and let them know, especially if they're from a place that maybe they, you know, they wouldn't have otherwise known that they do have rights, that they can ask for help, that they can look for different paths in life uh, if they choose to, um, that they need to be offered that opportunity. So there is a difference between Councillor Holliday's motion and mine. Um, I would submit to you that this has been, my mine was fleshed out a little more with, as Councillor Holliday is, is nodding and concurring with, with both staff and with advocates who are fighting for these women and girls and others who are in, uh, in some of these places, and I hope that you will support the, uh, the the path that I'm asking you to take. And then Q4, we'll be able to read the staff report and, and make a decision. I'll conclude by this one comment. I find that there is a, and by the way, I wanna thank staff for working incredibly hard on this. Um, I have no doubt that you have really struggled over what to do with this. I ask you though, and I, and I don't just mean MLS staff, I mean staff in general across the city of Toronto, no matter what the subject matter, even when we're dealing with really controversial items. Sorry, Councillor, can you wrap up, please? Yes, this is the last comment. It is, it is more helpful rather than to say this is controversial, what do you want to do, politicians who have no idea what you're talking about, to maybe come to us with more, uh, uh, maybe a, a clearly uh, a focused uh, recommendation and let us have the political debate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Questions of the mover? Councillor Karagiannis. Councillor, I was wondering, um, you, you dove in this report, did you participate in, I mean, like, and I'm sure that you came up with some recommendations or probably got the recommendations. Did you go to any of the hearings that staff did? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, are you proposing that we remove the cap on uh, body rob parlors? No. I mean, I'm not sure if that's the same recommendation that got advanced circulation of. Yes, it is. Read the motion, please, and you'll see that uh, I, I do the opposite of what you're suggesting. I remove Okay, the, I'm looking at one, one. Look at B, two B. looking at one, and if I look at the one here, one A, ensuring health, safety, and well-being of persons, B, consumer protection. That's not, that's not the same thing that's been changed. Yes. Okay. I made additions, but if you look at two A, rather two B, you'll see that it's actually crossed out the item that included increasing the removing of the cap. With or without, so you're not recommending that we remove the cap? No. And now, are you referring, do you want this to go to council or are you referring it back to, uh, to, to staff in order for them to look at this? To staff, I think it would be absurd to send this to council and have a 10 hour debate about something that we're asking staff to write okay. up on anyway. And then you got on page two, I believe, or one of, uh, so that's, okay. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Councillor Holliday. Questions of the mover? Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's an eloquently written motion, but I just want to make sure that I contrast the difference between the two because it's not whose motion gets picked, but it's the direction out of the committee that I want to make sure that staff have clarity on and there's clarity on. Um, through you to Councillor Matlow, by striking out the clause about increasing or removing the cap <clears throat> and then remaining silent on the cap, would you agree or consent that without being specific about the cap, it does essentially give staff direction to come back and report on a cap if they wish, versus the motion that I put forward that is quite clear that says we're not changing the cap system. I, I'm, yes, I'm being intentionally not prescriptive. Uh, well, no, uh, allow me to answer that in a more nuanced way. Uh, what I am being prescriptive about is that I think that it is unreasonable at this point to just offer them the recommendation as they may have been seeking to um, to uh, to support removing the cap at this point as part of a principle moving forward with the report. Um, what I don't want to be prescriptive about is that we know better than they know at this point uh, what the result of that report should be. In fact, why ask them to write a report if we're already telling them what to report? What I do want to make sure is that, and you'll see the words, the words that I chose and what Councillor Wong Tam chose were not our words. They reflect 
different voices that we heard from to ensure that their voices were part of this process moving forward. If we support my, my version, my motion, what we do is that staff have said that they are comfortable with what we're asking them of, but we also want to make sure that people feel included rather than pushed out of this process. And also, not only believe, but know that there isn't a pre-devised destination that we're going in, but that we're really saying, no, the whole point of consultation is to genuinely consult, and then the whole point of asking them to write a report is for us to actually read it. So the, I guess the last question is, do you think over the next six months, staff should spend time and resources developing policy on removing a cap? My, my personal inclination is no. Well, it's uh, just the interpretation of the motion. Um, what I want to hear from staff is not what you want and not what I want and not what Councillor Wong Tam wants, but I actually want to hear their professional, objective and independent advice, and then I can decide whether to accept it or to uh, disagree with it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of the mover? Seeing none. Other speakers? Councillor Fillion. Uh, yes, I've uh, handed out a couple of motions, so hopefully everyone has had a chance to read them. Um, they, um, I guess, are some fine-tuning. Uh, none of them tell staff what they need to come back with, um, so I'm trying to leave it fairly open. However, sort of addressing the issue, um, <coughs> The, and, and, and Councillor Madlow reminded me that I was here under duress. I was actually quite liking it. Great uh, committee members, terrific chair, great staff. And uh, th this item reminds me uh, why I didn't want to be on this committee, because it's one of those, it's, it's a no-win. We're happy like, you're here, Councillor. Like, no matter, no matter which door you open, it's the wrong door. It's, it's uh, you know, this is just, and it's deja vu, because I remember this from, 2005 when it was a big mess and we we thought there was a glimmer of hope that we'd uh, solved it but uh, in fact I think we made it worse so just to kind of summarize and and I don't envy the staff because <clears throat> I, I think they've got an extremely difficult job I do not support increasing the cap and the the where I would really moved me strongly that way was the comment of the first deputant who said if you do that you're taking and i'm paraphrasing not using her language but you're taking the human traffickers and abusers and you're making businessmen out of them and uh, that really that that comment really uh, hit home with me that that you know that is not what we should be doing and um, and I know the st staff have strongly suggested that that's what we should do, but I haven't heard a single committee member say that they're in favor of that. So if that did come back that way, it, you know, the staff should recommend what they think, I guess, we should do. But uh, if they're coming here for, um, to kind of test the waters, I don't think there's support for that. Um, I think we need to, within those 25 that we have, we need to provide much better protection for workers. Um, and that's what one of my motions is um, aimed at doing. Um, on the rest of the mess, I think we just have to cancel the current system and say, we made a mistake and we need to come up with something that separates the legitimate holistics, which are a, you know, a great business and you know, people should proudly do that for a living and they do a lot of good in society and uh, helping people's health and stuff like that. People should be proudly able to be holistic commission, uh, practitioners without having their reputation be smirched by all kinds of people who call themselves holistic practitioners but, but are in, in effect body rub parlors. So um, we really need to fix that mistake that we made. Um, and um, I'm not sure what the solution is, but um, there's got to be some jurisdiction somewhere that's done it 
properly. So um, hopefully, you know, hopefully, I think this requires a lot of us talking to each other uh, and to staff uh, so that we can hopefully um, not be splintered uh, six different ways when it um, comes back. It would be really nice if we could come out of here in the fall with a um, unanimous um, set of recommendations that we could recommend to council because otherwise it's just going to be a big mess when it gets there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Karajanis to speak. Thank you, Chair. I did have a couple of motions, but I'm not going to move the forward. However, I do want to address a couple of issues. We heard beyond any reasonable doubt from staff that a lot of the holistic are um, offering services that are questionable. We also heard from staff that a lot of the holistics, if not all of them, are um, exercising the cash option. And when you look at 2,200 people working, I want to thank for folks in the audience, but however, this is what I heard from, from staff. And uh, there's 2,200 workers. They're earning about $4,000 a month. That comes to 4,000, $4,400,000. Now, if you put in there what the operator makes of these holistics, you probably get another four million four hundred thousand. So we're close to ten million dollars that does not get recorded. People do not pay um, tax. People do not pay tax, uh, whether Canada Pension um, and other services. However, they are, we're told that when they buy stuff, they're they're being taxed there. So having said that, I also have heard from my constituency that has fifty plus. Uh, holistic services and talking to people there's a term that's called world traveler and a world traveler is an individual that starts from the orient gets a visitor visa for canada and then they were here then they go down to the south so they come to toronto then they go to new york they go to san francisco up to vancouver and after that they apply from inside canada to go to the to australia and to the united and to uh, uk and that's what is called the world traveler now some people disagree with that or some people have traveled extensively well i can't help that however i will not be supporting councillor matlow's uh, uh motion i'll be supporting councillor holiday's motion i think we need to go back to the draft board we need to make sure that uh, the choices that we'll make are, are the appropriate choices. I mean, if I was right now, I'd say close all the holistics. However, we can't do that unless we find solutions as to what's happening. And I thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. All right, so we're going to vote. The first motion we have is the one we're going to do them in the order they're introduced. So Councillor Holliday's is first. That's on the screen. All in favour? Opposed? And that passes three to two. So the next one, so Councillor Matlow's is redundant. Yes, okay. And then... Councillor Fillings is redundant as well? Yes. Okay. Sorry?
redundant. They are redundant. Yep, the clerks are saying, Councilor Fillion, the clerks are saying they're redundant. Okay. All right. Okay, we're good. Well, I disagree with, but respect the committee's decision to uh, refer Councillor Holliday's motion. Um, could, I, could I have it explained? Why is my motion, given that there are so many items in my motion that differ from uh, Councillor Holliday's, but may even complement Councillor Holliday's motion, why that is redundant? Could that not be deferred, uh, referred rather, to staff to as part of their report? We'll just, or just have it as a separate uh, item. However it's structured. Because you're sending it back to staff So just, it was that one, I can, I can reopen it. We can reopen it and try and cobble the two of them together. Sure. Why don't, why don't you throw it all? Why don't, you, why don't we throw it all together and refer it to staff? Okay. Or we can move all the motions and refer them to staff. There you go. Working together. <laughs> so as as for Jennifer. Together. So Jennifer, just so Councillor Holliday's motion doesn't want the cap removed and Councillor Matlow's motion, it's directing staff to consider how to proceed with the cap. So don't they conflict with each other? Um, Chair, it, it is up to the committee to determine what it wishes to do. At the moment, the item has been referred if the committee wishes to reconsider, um, and then it may take a variety of courses of action, including, including amending other existing motions or referring all a separate motion entirely to refer all motions to staff. Um, but it is up to the committee to decide. Okay, thank you. So, <laughs> may I? May I? Uh point of order, if I may, just sure. uh, to make a submission. Uh, given, I would submit to you that given that Councillor Holliday's motion actually specifically says don't, don't lift the cap, and mine uh, essentially says, mine's, mine's written in the negative, right? Mine's saying just remove, suggesting that we should remove the cap, that, it, that I think it's very clear that the inference by staff would be that yours as the positive do this rather than me saying don't do this that cancels that item out. In other words, I think Councillor Holliday's trumps mine on that. But the rest of it, yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's clear, but the rest of it, so remove that one item or let it stand, but I actually think just intuitively, Councillor Holliday's, given that his is a direction, would trump mine on that item. So can you take that clause out? Yeah, take that one item. One, that. Let's just go through them and can we, we delete, can we delete to be out and then send the rest off with okay. Councillor Holliday's what, staff. Sorry, can I ask you a question? What's the difference between yours and Councillor uh, Holliday's? I mean, uh, you, you, say that yours, you say uh, that yours is similar, so why even bother? Uh, so the difference is that his says uh, don't have a cap, mine says don't write that we should have a cap. But that's the only difference. Is there yeah. anything else different? So we voted on his, so why well, even open it now? Oh, no, no, I, I was speaking about just to be, the, the rest of the motion, yes, there are many other items that are, that are complementary and additional. Okay, what is complementary or, complementary or addition? The rest of it. What is the addition? On the screen, please, Julie. Yeah, workplace safety, looking at uh, diversion, a number of items. So it's about putting it into the, asking staff to consider all of that as Well, I'm sure staff will take that into consideration. Are you good with that, Chair? I'm not. All right. Are you, are you fine with that? First, we need a motion to reopen the item. Councillor Matlow is moving a motion to reopen the item. All in favor? Hold on. Carried. 
And what I move, so I move, I move to add to Councillor Holliday's deferral item motion, um, the the entirety of my motion aside from 2B. 2B. And 2A. 2A and B are the conflicting terms. 2A is conflicting? Can we, can we take that up slowly, please? Where's 2C? Okay, but why only, if C, why only body wrap parlors, why not also holistic? Safe requirements for work is the body wrap parlor and holistic bylaw. You only have 25 versus 397. Yes. Would you accept that? Yes. Okay. Move it up, please. It's a friendly amendment of everything except for 2A and 2B. Except for 2A and 2B? Okay, so 2C, would you be okay if we add um, in C's holistic? 2C's in there. No, but in 2C, which is in body rub parlor, we only got 25 of them versus 397. Yeah, would you be that, okay if we ask holistic? I, I, that may be redundant, but I'm ha I mean, it does no harm. All right, yep. that's okay. I'm getting all this, Julie. Okay. Holistic. At, at where it says C, increase safety requirements for workers in the body rub parlor bylaw and, and holistic uh, premises or something like that. Holistic. Taking 2B out. You want to take a couple of minutes for us to read? Taking two Taking 2A and 2B out. Correct. Right, but in 2C, which is bottom up part of it. So just to be clear, uh, so the entire motion, but omitting uh, 2B and then adding body rub parlors, um, and holistic centers. But 2A also, eh? Two, 2A also out? 2A is also out. 2A and 2B out? Yeah. 2A and 2B. Sure. Okay, and then we'll just add, okay. I'm right with that. So we're removing 2A and 2B? Yeah. And then we're adding. I'm, 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 I think we're good now. So you want to get C down and add it to his Oh, sorry, Councillor Fillion. Yes, yeah, so the, my large motion, if I change the words to the council directive that the um, general government licensing committee request, it's talking about the fees for the existing body rub parlors, not for new ones. So it's, if I uh, take out city council, then it's not contradictory in my view. And, um, the um, the other one. Hold on, sorry, on counselor. Hold on, counselor. Are you okay with? Okay, sorry, counselor. Go ahead. And then on the other one, I don't know if item number two is contradictory, but if it is, I could just remove that. Um, and um, just go with the addition of the D in uh, to item number one. Okay. So again, it's just yep. the Hold on, counselor. Yeah, I'm just
Okay, I'm going to call, I'm calling the meeting back to order. Okay, I'm calling the meeting back to order. So we move to reopen the item. The excellent City of Toronto clerk staff have tinkered with what a bunch of politicians just did to make it palatable. Thank you very much to Jennifer and Julie. And I think we're, put it on the screen and. Can we scroll through it or? So this includes components of Councillor Holliday's motion, components of Councillor Matlow's motion, and both the motions of Councillor Fillion. I can't hear you. What do you want? It says police and safety for workers in Water Rock Partners. There's only 25 Water Rock Partners, but there was 397 ballistics. I don't know what's the will of the committee. Do you want? Okay. Sorry, Julie. In C, can we include holistic centers? Okay. There's an and at the bottom. Yeah, there's an and at the bottom. With findings and, is there something after and? and findings and recommendations in the fourth quarter of 2019. Okay, can we scroll that up? It's, it's at the bottom of the uh, advanced motion. They want to see the okay. now, D above, they want to see that. They can't. They can't. No. Okay. Can we just... Everybody good? All good? All in favor? And nobody opposed. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all the staff from licensing and the clerk's department. And a motion to adjourn. Councillor Holliday, motion to adjourn. All in favor?